injected food poisoning. Wache kills five. Mm-hmm. Forty others affected. Very serious story. Very. Minority leadership reshuffle. Dr. Atofuazin calls for calm. Former leadership petitions. Elders. Council of State explores ways to reduce debt exchange impact. And we go to Sanarugu. Mm-hmm. Host of major educational institutions. But cries for development. Oh, mm. We've been there. Yes. Yeah. That's where the... Mm. Uh, Islamic family, yeah, yeah, Islamic yeah, yeah. senior high schools, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, the Ghanaian Times front page, big picture here of the newly minted minority leader, yeah, man. and says uproar in NDC as minority leadership changes. Dr. Mm-hmm. Atuforson calls for calm yeah, yeah. and promises to unite party for 2024 election victory. Mm-hmm. Also, Wa Senior High Technical School records two fire outbreaks in 24 hours, hey. and at the Africa Prosperity Dialogue, develop solutions needed to deepen intra-African trade. This is Vice President. Dr. Balmia speaking. Right. Also, two people have been granted two million Ghana cities bail for alleged robbery. Mm. Front page of the Daily Guide newspaper also has the vice president smiling. Mm-hmm. Dr. Balmia proposes strategies to transform Africa. The NDC uh, issues on the front page of the paper as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, let's go to the final newspaper. After to yield $35 billion annually and lift 3 million people out of poverty, says Dr. Balmia. I remember we were just talking about the fact that there hasn't been a lot of... Uh, activity yeah, for the African the after continental yeah. free trade area. We, mm-hmm. We're still waiting to see three years later what's going to come of it. Uh, Alpha Lotto gives quotes Selas Tete. Remember, there was some talk yes. about how he's not doing so well yeah. and hasn't really gotten much support. Well, they've given him 50,000 Ghana CDs as mm. government fails to reward him for winning the Under-20 Football World Cup all those years ago. Mm. Committee proposes ways government can save 83.5 billion Ghana CDs and new minority leader calls for unity among NDC members. Mm. Front page of the Republic for, uh, Press, photos of Dr. Kesala to force in her and Chairman Johnson, Esedun Ketia, mm-hmm. NDC in turmoil, it says. Mm. Uh, in the Ashanti region, pupils escaped death after school building collapsed at Achima Kwauma. Christians are very wicked. Oh. This mm. is coming from this musician known as Great Ampon. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'll give you I, I thought I did I, did I play a song this morning. Um, is it Ampon and C? It's part of, okay. You know, he says we are, we are very <laughs> wicked. <laughs> okay, well, on the Chronicle front page, minority leadership reshuffle. Muntaka strips Mosquito and Fifi Kwete naked and says, I heard some of the officers saying that some elders were sent to talk to us. I'll be happy for it to be mentioned. Which elder was sent to talk to me? Because mm. nobody was sent to talk to me. Mm. Suspected killers of GPHA boss freed by court, the Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority. We'll, we'll talk about that story. Mm-hmm. Atuforsen accepts to take over Haruna's job. Mm. Balbia advocates for smart investment in critical infrastructure. Court orders Ufuzu Ampufu and Kweku Boahin to open defense. And Galatians chapter 5 verse 16. But I say, walk by the spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. All right. Front page of the Inquisitor also goes with... Uh, the front, uh, some of the issues that have happened in the NDC. Mm-hmm. They also talk about the COVID-19 cash exposure. It's a minority to chase Kweku Tekno. Do you know Kweku Tekno? No. The health minister. Okay. <laughs> His name is Kweku Tekno. <laughs> oh, Why? Okay, daily analysts from page. Minority reshuffle. We were never consulted. Muntaka exposes Asidu Nkitia and Fifi Kwete. Also, um, Adikoka is calling for calm in the party. Mm-hmm. Adom Group is focused on being a top name in affordable housing. Okay. BC results of 75 candidates have been cancelled mm-hmm. over mobile phones and other stories in the daily analysts. Yesterday okay. on the what the papers are saying, the editor promised that he was going to release a bomb, a blockbuster this morning. Mm. I don't know. Didn't land. Well, you have it in front of you. Well, <laughs> NDC's new minority leader rejected ghost businessman's bribe to keep Harun Idrisu in office. That is his big... Ghost businessman. Yes, ghost businessman. Mm. Like, you know, and then he goes on, the, the paper goes on to talk about other issues in the NDC. But on the top right uh, side of the paper says that Alex Mode tax gold for oil deal as self-enrichment scheme. Hmm. Okay. And the p- new publisher from page, time to unite, time to win. Minority leaders speak. Also, Kofi Adams and Inusa Fuseini defend the new NDC leaders. Muntaka still opposes party decision on minority leaders. And why a road contractor, cum businessman, is sponsoring agitations against the minority group's new leadership. And finally, that a from, ghost businessman. Yeah, <laughs> and finally, answer. from me, the front page of the BNFT event had. Mm. Great news on the front page. Abiola Bewo appointed CEO yes. of UBA Africa. Congrats, I, I Abiola. She was already. Okay, she was UBA Ghana. Ghana, yes. She's, she's not UBA she's Africa. Not, she's Africa. 
Africa, boss. Yes. Wonderful. Critical infrastructure will accelerate after success. We need to spend time and talk about this after business. After it's become a talk shop. Yeah. They are not doing it's, anything. It's looking like Nepal. Only eight countries have even made arrangements. It's, it's looking like Nepal. We like big names. We don't yeah. do anything about it. We have everything. Mm. Let's redefine our narrative. Baumia declares at Co Summit. Let me take you online. Citynewsroom.com. Review free SHS. Sell non-performing assets. Individual board holders to government. Meanwhile, government strikes deal with Insurance Association on debt exchange program. The same group, the individual bond holders, have appealed to Toby Afede to intervene in their situation. Meanwhile, the president has appointed a new chief of air staff. Then there's a whole raft of stories on the minority. For example, Avoka apologizes to Atto Forsen over non-entity comment. He says, I'm sorry. Still mm. on, actually, he's, to be fair, he says he, he, he was misinterpreted, or a, a mix of both, whatever. Well, on, still on this matter, don't be in a hurry, Muntaka, to Atto Forsen. And then um, <laughs> our agenda is to unite. This is Kofi Amabua. Meanwhile, minority is saying we should drag agenda 111 contractors to site now. They are saying this to government. Mm. Uh, those are some of the stuff. If you go on my joy online, they're leading with the debt exchange program. Government reaches agreement with the insurance association. Also, Aruna Adrisu disclaims post on Facebook, Twitter, handles purported to be his. And then uh, rebel minority MPs petition national executives and speaker. That story also no. Meanwhile, uh, consultations are not mandatory. Spio Gabra on changes in minority leadership. So everybody's chiming in. Even the majority chief will be saying something. Changes in minority leadership, if the cracks get deeper, good for me. This is uh, Frank Anandompre also saying what he wants to say <laughs> about this matter. All right, I think we should just get into the details. Okay, so let's take it from there, right? Mm. I'll take it to page 13 of the mm. Daily Graphic then. Minority leadership reached out for Dr. Atuforsen calls for calm. Mm. The new minority leader in Parliament, Dr. Kesar Atuforsen, has appealed to the rank and file of the NDC not to dwell too much on the recent reshuffle in the parliamentary leadership of the party. Rather, party members should focus on what the new leadership in Parliament will do to complement the efforts of the party to better the lot of the people of Ghana. Quote, mm. the work given to the new leaders will require dedication to execute and we are sure the party that we will deliver on what the party expects of us. Mm. Before the meetings, when there were meetings, closed the door meetings yesterday, Dr. Forsen addressed a press conference mm -hmm. uh, and he called for calm. Uh, there's a petition to the Council of Elders angle as well, uh, and this is at a separate press conference held shortly after the new leaders, uh, the former minority leadership, this is led by Harina Idrisu, they have petitioned the Council of Elders of the NDC to suspend mm. the current reshuffle until a holistic stakeholder consultation has been done. The petition copied to the party's national executive, the Speaker of Parliament, and the former NDC flag by John Hermani Mahama was signed by 70 NDC MPs. Right. A lot of stories yes. on this. Yes, well, on the Chronicle, a Muntaka strips mosquito of Fifi Kwete naked. That's their headline. The former minority chief whip, Muntaka Mubarak, has rubbished assertions by the national chairman, Johnson Asedu Nketia, and general secretary, Fifi Fiavi Kwete, mm. that the ousted leaders were consulted on the move to reshuffle. He has since dared the leadership to mention the name of the party elder who was sent to consult them, the old mm. leadership, on the move to change the leadership of the minority. He spoke to journalists yesterday, saying that he heard some officers saying that elders were sent to talk to us. I'll be happy for it to be mentioned. Nobody was sent to talk to me. According to him, he is on almost all the decision-making bodies of the party, as well as the minority leader, Harun Idrisu, or should we say former minority leader now. Mm -hmm. But at no meeting was that agenda discussed. As such, he firmly insisted that it is clear that it is a letter, yes, written by the general secretary, but the decision may just be the decision of a few people in the party. Mm -hmm. The decision to reshuffle the front bench of the minority appears to be of not much concern, but the manner in which it was done seems not to have gone down well with Alaji Muntaka. So mm. they've scheduled a meeting um, between the minority and the party leadership to settle some differences. Mm. Uh, it goes on to give a few more details. But mm. um, as we know, the change has been done. Yeah, before we come the to the, the ghost businessman, uh, <laughs> the deputy minority leader, Emmanuel Makovibo, has been speaking for the first time, and he says their focus is on unity. In his first interview with the media after his nomination as deputy minority leader, Ms. Amako Fibua, who is the MP for Elembele, mm -hmm. said the number one priority of the party at the moment is to unite and address all the grievances that emanated as a result of the reshuffle. Now, he was speaking after a meeting with the Speaker of Parliament, Abambabin, at his Uyarifai residence. And he says, quote, our priority right now is to make sure we unite our caucus, and that is so important to us. We are so confident that we can do this. So that, and he replaced James Kluchia Veji. And also, there have been a raft of uh, statements from the Western region, the Central region. Hey, did you see the statement from Maoli Secondary School? Yes, I saw one too from the Ejumaku uh, Omanini. <laughs> and I mean, th there are so many, you know, it, it tells you that politicians have so many people linked to them. Mm -hmm. Have you, you heard? Know, old that? students, mm -hmm. churches, 
tips, Town, yeah. you know, it's a lot of things. So, yeah. And it also tells you that even though you may be doing something quietly, I hope I'm looking at you. Mm-hmm. Do, do, do. When your post comes, you know who are your friends. <laughs> do you remember that childhood song? Hey, yeah, oh, yeah. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you can say that. Yeah, at the same time. You can say that, yeah. you know? Well, let me tell you about this ghost business man that everybody seems to know about, but it's unwilling to identify I'm properly. On page three of yeah. the Herald newspaper, it says that the ghost businessman yeah. who attempted to bribe some MPs on the side of the MPP has emerged in the raging confusion in the opposition national Democratic Congress over replacement of the leadership in Parliament. Mm-hmm. The wealthy businessman is reported to have offered a huge amount of money to MP for Ejumaku Enyame CM, Dr. Kesel Atufosin, to reject his appointment mm-hmm. by the NDC to replace Haruna Edutu as minority leader. Reports are rife in the opposition party, both in and out of Parliament. The ghost businessman, who had used his deep pockets to secure yeah. Ken Foyata's state... Is it office, the same story that you read about some contractor thing? On your office? No, that's you, different. No. That's different. It says, had placed a phone call mm-hmm. to uh, the Ejumaku Enyame CM MP to induce him to publicly reject the appointment and see him later for a parcel. <laughs> yeah, I think the publisher has a similar yeah. story, right? It's about, yes. What uh, are they uh, saying? A road contractor cum businessman mm-hmm. is sponsoring agitations against the minority group's new leadership. And it says, coming up. All right, let's go to the debt exchange. There's mm-hmm. a major... Uh, Breakthrough Yes, of the some insurance sort. association has come on board. That's mm-hmm. citybusinessnews.com. Government strikes deal with insurance association mm-hmm. who would receive the same terms as the banks. Story says that uh, the government and the Ghana Insurance Association or Insurance Association have made headway on the terms of the domestic debt exchange for insurance companies. This was announced in a joint statement signed by the Minister of Finance and then the, the head of the, the insurance, Mr. Aklasi. Now, the insurance companies will participate in the debt exchange on similar terms to the banks. Meanwhile, the um, individual bondholders have been actively engaging. Mm-hmm. They met Toby Afede yesterday on the debt exchange, appealed to him to bring his weight to uh, basically advise government not to include them in the debt exchange. Mm. But they've also released a very interesting paper where they have shown where how government can save up to 85 billion CDs through what they call fiscal adjustments and structural adjustments. I'm going to read some of them. So they are saying, for example, that the government should review free SHS, sell non-performing SOEs, retrieve monies embezzled in... Um, Auditor General's reports and uh, reduce the size of government. They actually give specific amount of money for specific suggestions. And when you put together all the things they've suggested, they say government can save up to 85 billion CDs. Uh, I thought that was interesting. So those are the stories from the debt exchange side of things. Uh, let's come to other stories. All right, can we do quickly two education stories? Yes. So the first one, the editorial in the new publisher today talks about International Day of Education, which was actually January 24th. I'm not mm-hmm. sure if we, if we saw that. Mm-hmm. But they're asking some questions about how our education system is faring and mm-hmm. what's the use of educating children who will come out as outstanding academics, but with zero morals, zero mm-hmm. self-discipline, zero sense of self-responsibility, and zero home sense, as we call it, mm-hmm. in our local parlance. You can read a bit more in the new publisher, but on the back page of the Ghanaian Times, Wa Senior High Technical School, mm-hmm. they've had two fire outbreaks in 24 hours. Oh. Now, if you're a parent sending your child away mm-hmm. to school, fire you want their safety, right? In 24 yeah. hours. Uh, yes, nearly 24 hours after fire engulfed five dormitories. Hmm. At the Wa Senior High Technical School in the Upper West Region on Monday, two more dormitories at the school were raised down by another fire on Tuesday evening. The second fire started around 8 p.m. There was great panic among the students, as you can imagine. The girls' prefect, Winifred Kogkane, was in- interviewed. She said they went to study in the evening. They heard some girls screaming for help. Oh. The timely arrival and intervention of the fire service prevented the fire from spreading to other parts of the dorm. Hmm. All the belongings of the students in the affected two rooms were burnt. The regional minister, Dr. Hafiz bin Salis, um, and the regional director of education, Abdul Razak Kora, and mm. officers from the fire service visited the school. They pledged to provide support to them. Uh, Mr. Kora said following the first fire outbreak, a team of counselors came to the affected students to help them in the recovery process. But mm. you can imagine how much stress this is causing at this school right now. Well, mm. I'm, I'm staying with education first in the public press on page six. Mm. In the Ashanti region, some pupils of Abraso. Methodist Primary School in the Achumakwa district of the Ashanti region nearly met the untimely de- demise 
after mm. a section of the school building collapsed. Oh. Mm. The school building, which has been in a deplorable state for years, collapsed and nearly killed some of the school children. Residents in the community are upset about the development and are calling on authorities to construct new classroom blocks for the pupils. According to the assemblyman of the area, Honorable Immanuel Nyanting, uh, the said primary school has been in a bad state for years without any innovation or support from the district Still assembly. on education. education. I want to take it to Tamale quickly. There was one on the boat that capsized, oh. the Atika Gome pupils. Okay. Now we are told that plans are underway to give jackets or life jackets to the pupils because they cross the Volta every day to go to school. GS is also commemorating with the bereaved families of this very sad tragedy. Well, then there's a constituency watch, which is Sanerugu, mm -hmm. uh, pages 16 and 17 of the Daily Graphic, uh, says that host of major educational institutions by cries for development. Mm -hmm. Apparently, uh, although it is partly rural, the constituency is host to the regional directorate of the Ghana Education Service. Tamale Senior High School is there. Hmm. Bagabaga College of Education wow. is there. The Tamale College of Education is there. Ghana School of Languages hey. also there. And so the area is called the Education Ridge. Now, they have bad roads. Uh, development has... They, they are lacking quite far behind. Uh, but opinion leaders say they are doing their bit. MCE hmm. for the area, Mohammed Yakubu Ahmed said, through his efforts, a number of roads uh, in the area particularly the policy to Dimali stretch, had be, uh, which had been a major concern, was being worked well, on. Well, finally, on education, teachers are angry with government for defaulting in their Tier 2 pension payments. Mm -hmm. Now, four teacher unions are accusing government of defaulting in the payment of contributions to the Ghana Education Service Occupational Pension Scheme, which is called Tier 2. The unions are the NAT, the NAGRAT, the TEU. They say all the government deducts these contributions every month from their salaries. It is in areas of over 400 million cities. As payments have not been made since last payment in March 2022. General Secretary Mark Crunchy, speaking to City News on behalf of the unions, complained that they've written several times to the regulator that they should ensure that the employer pays the contributions as soon as it's deducted. Unfortunately, the regulator appears helpless, and this is why we have to quickly issue this statement. Just a very quick one, just to commend GNPC. We know they do a lot around the country to mm. help the education system. They've now completed a 24-unit sanitary facility mm. for Second D College. This nice. is in the Western region. Um, again, this is a 24-unit sanitary facility. It has a mechanized water system. Mm. Um, there was a dilapidated structure that they've replaced. There were so many health risks associated with that. But kudos to GNPC and the CSR that they're doing. And hopefully, Corporate Ghana can also step up and do more to support the government in providing great facilities for our education system. Let me give you yeah, two stories from the Kweu Summit. Mm -hmm. And then I'll tell you about the Wachi, uh, the Wachi story. Yeah. The Wachi story. Mm -hmm. uh, on page three of the BNF. T, the Vice President, Dr. Manu Baumia, he's called for smart investments into the continent's critical infrastructure. The movie said could accelerate success for the African continental free trade area. Mm -hmm. Now, on the same uh, note, he's also talking about the continent having everything, mm -hmm. but there needs to be a redefinition of the narrative mm -hmm. of the continent if AFTA is to work. You find that story on page two mm -hmm. of the BFT. And then on the Wache mm -hmm. matter, yeah, um, on serious. the front page of the Daily Graphic, five people mm -hmm. have reportedly died after eating a meal of rice and beans, popularly known as Wache. They mm -hmm. brought from a food joint at Oyibi Bush Canteen junction in Accra. About 40 people were reportedly affected, out of which five, including a pregnant woman and a little vendor, oh, oh, died. Oh, oh, the victims, including the Wache seller, popularly known as Yellow Sisi, and some of her family members were rushed to the Valley View Hospital, OEB Hospital, in Dodua, and Dodua Hospital, and other facilities when they complained of severe stomach ache after they had eaten oh. the food last week, Friday. Mm -hmm. Now, the joint is considered to be one of the popular food joints at the OEB Bush Canteen. Oh, Charlie, very, this is very really sad. tragic. Okay, two stories from the Finder newspaper today. Their auditorial, it's a shame that Ghana owes coach Selas Tete. Charlie. And Godfrey, I know you have a lot of interest in this story. So it talks about how we have a bad reputation as a country for owing sports personalities, boxers, athletes, footballers, coaches. The country's history is replete with stories of sports personalities working so hard to achieve success at competitions to place Ghana on the global map only <laughs> to be denied what is due them. So remember uh, DK Poison's issue? Right, that the country yeah. still owes him supposedly forty five thousand dollars that he earned mm -hmm. for winning the world title. It goes on to talk about other issues as well. And Kosela Tete, mm -hmm. as we know, he won the under twenty World Cup for Ghana, mm -hmm. and uh, apparently well, it's yet to be. While that, for that is going on, City Sports has a story that Godfrey broke to us yesterday. Sports yes. Ministry blows over one forty two million CDs on senior national teams, mm -hmm. and according to the story, a document cited by City Newsroom dot com reveals that the Sports Ministry released a total of eight. 0.1 million CDs on the two-legged World Cup qualifier between Nigeria and Ghana. 
A total of 63 million was released as funds to support the Black Stars' participation at the FIFA World Cup in Qatar. An additional 8 million released for payment of FIFA rights for Ghana Broadcasting Corporation. 57 million as support for the Black Stars' funds in Qatar. What does that mean? They didn't have it, it, was, just, it, it was just line items with no explanation. I'm sure the public accounts committee can get into this now. Then we also told that there was an amount spent on the fem female national team. But at last year, the hmm. Black Queens played one match, it was against Morocco. Sorry. Morocco paid for that game. I confirmed that. And we still, the, the and we still managed year, to say we spent our money. The previous year, they played two games, hmm. which were the World Cup qualifiers, uh, which were the AFCON qualifiers against Nigeria. So, if the, perhaps the two games against Nigeria cost us. Almost two million Ghana cities. I don't know, but last year the Black Queens were almost inactive. <laughs> anyway, let me take you okay. to. Okay, okay, quickly finish. Just yeah, very I'll quick. Tell you why Christians are wicked. All right. Well, the price of sanitary pad. <laughs> we need to talk about this because it's outrageous. Mm. Sanitary pad. The price has jumped from nine CDs to eighteen Ghana CDs, forcing hey. some girls to use cloth. This is ridiculous. We did we a don't report know why on this. Tax on this. We did a report on this two days ago on CNN. We need and to do what something is, what about is even this. Worse is is that in some areas. The girls have to treat sex yes. to get money to buy it. Yes. So, what? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it, you should listen to because the story. How can you we, we've done, you... there's been a focus on this on City Prime News and also on CNR. It's a really serious situation. And it's, you know, it's bad. with the high cost of things, it's getting more and more serious. Yes. Now, let me give you the, the okay, give me the, the Christian story. I wanted to give you the CEO of no, UBI. Uh, uh, I'm Paul's conclusion. I've read the story. It's born out of his own personal experiences. Who, where is, he said, where, who is this guy? Oh, but you just played the mass music. I'm asking who is he. Why, 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 why should, should, with all the things that I've said, why should what he says be so important to be on the front page? Yeah, he's promoting like, a new song, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> there's, a, there's a good feature in the BNFT about building the Keta district mm -hmm. with a feature on somebody called VLK Jokoto, a young can do entrepreneur. Oh, okay. Okay. Thought that was quite nice, and uh, apparently he's uh, an Anglo royal and a business advisor mm -hmm. on a mission to make Keta a location fit for financiers, promising startups and high-value businesses. And that's a really nice article that they, they wrote on him mm -hmm. in the paper. All right, guys, thank you for being on the new Super Review. We'll take it away into the business desk. Stay with us. This is the City Breakfast Show. First thing you do is to relax, mm -hmm. take a paper, and list all your debt, irrespective of the amount involved. Mm -hmm. Many a time, Mami I come, which is the, the canteen shop that you usually buy food from. Sometimes you are owing three days, four days, you haven't mm -hmm. paid. So when mm -hmm. I compile your list, you end up losing that one out. So when you do a lot of Mami I come around, you probably would think that, hey, that's, that's a lot of money. So you need to have paper, pen, and this time around, I will encourage you to use red pen to, to write it. That shows the thing that's going. In other words, you need to have money. So you list from your uh, mortgage, if you have one, from your car loan, if you have one, mm -hmm. from education loan, if you have one, mm -hmm. the food, if you have one, loan from the bank, if you have one, companies outstanding, if you have one, I will use from your friends if you have one. Mm -hmm. So you need to have a whole list of it. That's one. Mm -hmm. First thing you do is to relax. Mm -hmm. That having one job mm. is either too insecure or doesn't pay you enough to live. So instead, they have different work streams. Mm -hmm stranded Ghanaian students in the UK and I'm seeing a lot of movement on this on social media. Now we are told that students on Ghana government scholarship under the Ghana Scholarship Secretariat are stranded in the United Kingdom. Some have been dismissed from their schools while others are being chased by their schools and landlords to pay their rent. Now some have not received over eight months stipend which makes the situation very critical. Others have had to overstay because they can't get money to go back to their country. Some have been sued by their landlords for refusal to pay rent. The government of Ghana should act immediately to rescue these stranded citizens and save the nation from disgrace. This is an annual story. It's a recurring story. Uh, Sky, when you come in, we'll try and do something about this. Because, you know, we've both been students in the UK. Trust me, Michael, if you are in Obi Manso and your government hasn't sent you money in that cold weather, you look, you could even get suicidal. It is very, very serious. So it, it's serious. And you know, during the whole China Wuhan thing, we had some 
uh, international students that I was interacting with and the way they felt helpless all through the period. I can just imagine the emotional uh, the challenge that yeah, they have yeah, to yeah, deal yeah, with, you know, yeah. to be so helpless in such a situation. It is serious. So yeah. we'll spend some time talking about this. But it's time for the City Business News, brought to us by uh, MTN. Now, don't give people a door collar tune when they call you. If you enjoy high life hip hop, hip life, or gospel, simply dial star one three five five hash. Choose from a wide range of music options, and that's it. Everyone who calls you gets to listen and dance to your favorite music too. Get a dope collar back tune today and enjoy life only on MTN. News also brought to you by Access Bank Enterprise Life and your OMC of choice. Go! We keep making life ever so convenient. We now accept Momo. For all your fuel purchases, just remember to Momo it at Goyle. You can also use your bank card or other bank cards to buy fuel at Goyle. Drive to your nearest Goyle station, buy your fuel and pay by Momo, bank card or Goyle Go card. Visit our social media platforms for more information. Goyle Good Energy. So Michael will take it up with the business news. Hello and welcome to the breakfast edition of City Business News, proudly brought to you by your most comprehensive business news website, citybusinessnews.com, MTN Guel, Enterprise Life, your advantage, Access Bank, more than banking. Let's head straight into our stories now. And government and the Ghana Insurance Association have reached an agreement on the participation of insurance companies in the domestic debt exchange program. Under the agreement, insurance companies will participate in the program on similar terms as the banks. In a joint statement yesterday, government says through the solvency window of the Ghana Financial Stability Fund, it will provide support for the insurance companies that are seriously affected by the domestic debt exchange program. The government says the objective is to protect jobs and stabilize the insurance industry. Away from that, the public sector has been ranked the sixth best industry in customer service delivery in the country. This is according to the 2022 Ghana Customer Service Index report released yesterday. The research conducted by the Institute of Customer Service Professionals indicates that the public sector recorded a marginal improvement from 60.3% in 2021 to 67.7%. Speaking on the sidelines of the launch of the report, the president of the Institute uh, Yvonne McCarthy urged public sector agencies to brace the new trends of customer service delivery to remain competitive. This year, and I'm very happy for this, the public sector has moved from consistently being either last or last but one to being the sixth, which to me is refreshing because it's always been a problem and I've always wondered how they're going to get out of that loop. So thankfully this year, Ghana um, Standards Authority came tops at that particular sector. They've moved to the sixth position. They haven't just switched roles or ranks, but the score has also changed a bit. So that also tells you there's some type of work going on there. And I think you would bear with me. Last year we had DVLA being the top and we had to visit the place and check and you could visibly see that there were a few things that had changed from the DVLA that you used to know before so little by little as they say we will get I think it's just purely the work of these organizations and then also the changing atmosphere we're moving into an experienced economy now we're not in agriculture we're not in manufacturing even service we're moving away from service it's now about experience and so if you're still in the position where you're thinking you're just providing a selling a product or providing a service without thinking about the experience the customer walks away with. It means you stand the risk of losing your business. And I think most of these organizations have understood that. And so they are, they are latching on that and trying to make a change. That was the president of the Institute of Customer Service Professionals, Yvonne McCarthy. Now, away from that, Energy Minister Dr. Matthew Pukupempe has assured that Ghana will transition from carbon emitting energy to clean energy by 2070 as it implements its national energy transition framework. He, however, says Africa cannot be suddenly compelled to switch from hydrocarbons to cleaner forms of energy as countries across the world make efforts to achieve zero emission. Speaking at a public lecture on Ghana's energy sector at the University of Ghana, Dr. Matthew Pukupempe said his outfit remains committed to ensuring that Ghana is not left behind in the energy transition. His Excellency the President launched this document at COP27 in Sham El Sheikh in Egypt. It's a blueprint for what we want to do with this country and all the sectors that needs to migrate or transition from their fossil-based fuel to clean energy. As the sector minister, I welcome this dialogue and this discussion because it's not yet done. The document is still being worked on because still people are 
expression of their opinion, and we have enough room to still listen to any new ideas. I am fully committed as the sector minister to provide the needed policy direction and leadership to ensure that Ghana is not left out of the energy transition. That was Energy Minister Dr. Matthew Poku Prempe. Meanwhile, the oil and gas sector chairman for the Association of Ghana Industries, Kwame Jantua, has asked successive governments to stick to the National Energy Transition Framework to ensure steady progress in its implementation. Oil industry has given a lot to Ghana in terms of uh, revenue and even in terms of product. Right now, all our electricity, major parts of our electricity is run by gas. So it is something that we need to handle and handle well. Even the developed countries, they haven't 100% transitioned. So it is something that we need to work and move forward with it. But we have a, a transition plan. Let's see how we work it. But the other thing I will say is that I hope if government changes, the next government that is going to come in is not going to abandon it. If they need to add to it, let's add to it. You hear the oil and gas sector chairman of the Association of Ghana Industries, AGI Kwame Jantua. Now on the interbank foreign exchange market where banks trade amongst themselves, the dollar gained 19 pesos and is selling at 10 cities, 60 pesos. The British pound gained 24 pesos and is selling at 12 cities, 88 pesos. The euro gained 1 peso and is selling at 11 cities, 5 pesos. However, at some forex bureaus in the capital, the dollar is selling at 12 cities, 90 pesos. The British pound at 15 cities, 60 pesos and the euro at 13 cities, 70 pesos. Let's now join Gillian Hammer of Data Bank for more on the topic, the fundamentals of financial planning, why you should track and manage your expenses. The second fundamental to financial planning is tracking and managing your expenses. It is important to know how much you spend on a monthly basis. Most of us do some form of mental accounting, where we keep a mental record of many of the big expenses but never take the time to write it down. There's a saying that the little foxes spoil the vine. In addition to some of the big expenses such as housing, utilities, food, it is important to write down what you spend on seemingly little things such as entertainment, data, tithes, tips, helping family, sponsoring others. It all adds up. And if you're not careful, you could exhaust all your money before the month ends. As we get ready to enter a new month, consider tracking your expenses daily for the next month or two and see if there are any surprises as well as any areas that you could consider cutting. Someone recently asked me whether this strategy wouldn't make them stingy. The answer is no. It is not about depriving yourself. It is about spending wisely so that you are still in the black. That was Gillian Hammer of Data Bank. And that does it for the breakfast edition of City Business News Rally, brought to you by MTN Goal, Enterprise Life, Your Advantage, Access Bank, Modern Banking, and powered by your most comprehensive business news website, citybusinessnews.com. My name is Michael Obudu. Thank you for listening. Have a good business day, and as always, please stay safe. <laughs> be in business remember we are holding each other remember we are holding each other. the person who is employing you your customer who says that give me a week to pay you the person that says that yes i can patronize your services but can you reason with me in this way mm -hmm. this is what i'm dealing with in my own setup so can you meet me halfway mm. we need to learn how to listen to these people and truly hear them and trust what they are sharing with us so that we can continue to be in business. Remember, we are holding each other's hand. Mm -hmm. Sexual intimacy has a huge load of health and wellness, including psycho-emotional benefits. You know, uh, and which is why we need to address the pain and the cause of the pain, just so that we make the experience holistic, pleasurable, just so the individuals, particularly the women, can derive the, the benefit. For instance, good sexual experience, when you have good sex, mm -hmm. that leads to orgasm. Mm -hmm. At least two of that a week <clears throat> has been found through uh, scientific research to even limit the risk of some medical disorders by 50%. Mm. Serious? Yes.
two times a week. Yes, two times a week. You are calling like a prescription. <laughs> so people are actually, this one, they have to scatter. You know, and obviously the more the better. People are updating their notes <laughs> and making these resolutions. You know, and so Charlie. it has a tendency to boost your immunity. Forgive. You know, and that's how your body is able to stand up to infections mm. and be able to protect itself. Mm. It enhances your mood. Sexual from Enterprise, who spoke about the fundamentals of insurance, and then we ended with Yabene Amponsa on where to invest your money in times like these. Michael Obodu brings us a summary shortly. But it's one Ghana. The Vodafone One Ghana promo is here. We just want to see you can have 20 minutes talk time to all other networks and one gig of data every day between 5 and 11.59. Dial star 5.30, hash subscribe, and enjoy longer conversations and browsing. The Vodafone One Ghana promo is the best value offer in town, and it's easy on your pocket. Save big when subscribing to the One Ghana promo daily. You can subscribe as many times as you want from 5 a.m. to 11.59. Vodafone further together. And it's the season to stay connected. Reactivate your Cal Bank account this holiday season and get more value. Get access to our short code service star 771 hash to CalNet and our app. And you reactivate your Cal account between now and January to stay on top of your account. Call Cal Bank toll free 0800 500 500. Chat with us online on our social media platforms and on WhatsApp. You can also contact us via email at customercare at calbank.net. Visit our website at calbank.net to know more. Cal Bank forward together. And this year's Enterprise Motor Insurance promo is different. Buy or renew motor insurance with Enterprise and win instant gifts such as fuel coupons, branded gift items, and qualify for our monthly raffle draws with amazing rewards. You can also win an iPhone 14, washing machines, high pressure cooker, car washer, vacuum cleaner, auto tire inflator, and more. There's also a premium crutch rocket motorbike up as your final prize. Promo is regulated by the NLA on the Caritas Lottery platform. Talk to your insurance broker, your agent, or visit any enterprise branch for your motor insurance and get free fuel coupons and be the possible winner of some amazing rewards. Enterprise your advantage. The City Breakfast Show. Rise above the noise. Please wait. Uh, please wait. Please wait until I get my new car. Please wait until I find my real son. I'm gonna get me some love, love, some body. My girl, sweet girl. My girl. Hello and you're welcome to another episode of the City Business Edition here on 97.3 City FM. My name is Michael Obudu and it's great to be back on your radio. Now, we are concluding the Effective Living series this week with summaries of all the fantastic conversations we've been having over the last couple of weeks and i'm sure you found them very relevant and key for you especially as a starter for the year 2023 now let me walk you through some of the topics that we have been discussing over the period now week one focused on physical preparation for 2023 week two emotional and mental health imperatives for 2023 and last week was on professional priorities for 2023. And finally, this week focused on financial foundations for 2023. Now, let me walk you through some of the topics that we have focused on on this theme for the week. We had practical ways to get out of debt with Charles Mensa. We also had securing your financial future in turbulent times with Doris Ahiati. We had insurance fundamentals with Michael Otulabi, who is a senior manager for broker-led corporate distribution at Enterprise Life, who are sponsors for 
the Effective Living Series this year. And finally, we had Overcoming Self-Sabotaging Behaviors with Michael Ohene Ifa. Now, let's listen to all these fantastic conversations that Bernard Avler, the host of the City Breakfast Show, had with this very solid guest that came through on the Effective Living Series. I can guess your services will be in high demand because a lot of people are not sure what to do with their money and because of all the economic times, but we'll come to all of that. What I wanted you to do first was to tell us whether things are that bad. You know, Ghana's debt to GDP is 105%. Lots of people have had certain levels of haircut and people are not very happy. As a financial guru, before you even start a presentation, how worried should we be about our finance in 2023? Um, naturally, you, one has to be worried because mm. if you cannot service your debt, mm. Uh, it kills the spirit. Um, but in there, there's always an opportunity. Mm -hmm. So you've got to look out for what opportunity can I play out. If you take Ghana, for instance, mm -hmm. we have a lot of assets locked up. Mm -hmm. When it's asset locked up, we have the oil, we have the gold, whatever. We have a lot of natural resources locked up. It's a structure of the natural resources that we haven't done right. I think the government in the past attempted to um, raise funds out of future natural resources. It didn't work well. I'm referring to Japan. It didn't work well in terms of the PR aspect of it. But if I look at it critically, we could have raised money out of it and use it for economic activity. That would earn us regular, constant income. That's the track. Now, if you only raise it for consumption, naturally it means that for the next 15, 20 years, we'll be in trouble. Mm. So it's high time that Ghana as a country sits back, reflect on the natural resources, and structure a deal, and pass a law to guarantee the structure. Because sometimes, like the GET Fund, the original concept of the application of the GET Fund is not being done, mm. because it was meant for infrastructure. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you see it being used for um, other things other than the infrastructure. So when it, and then also the schools, it all has to be captured properly, and mm. then Get fund goes in there. Unfortunately, if you look mm. at the revenue tied into get fund, mm. it was supposed to be a VAT element specifically for mm. get fund. Mm. To date, they haven't done that. So I would have requested and begged that in future, when we pass a law tied into some revenue, it should trigger immediately the VAT element for the or get, get fund levy is end. We shouldn't wait for. 60 days, 90 days before they will pay them something. No. So you're saying some of our challenges could be finding a way to monetize our assets, but others are also just designing your cash flow and making sure that there's ready money to do certain things. I, I don't want you to get ahead of yourself. So let's, let's talk about the topic. So the topic is practical ways to get out of debt. Now, practical because I know there are many theories around these things, but I brought you in because you're a very practical guy. So I want you to start by telling us how people even get into debt. First and foremost, <clears throat> people get to debt because, one, they were keeping up appearances. Like the Christmas just passed. Mm -hmm. People were having parties. They may have planned it maybe six months ahead. People are getting married. They may have planned it a year ahead. Mm -hmm. Next door neighbor, you are getting pressure from your colleagues, your parents, to get married. Mm. And therefore, you attended one or two weddings, and then you are pushed to do it. You naturally go and borrow. Once you're borrowing, you are denying yourself of a future potential revenue. In other words, you are utilizing the process now, and you will be servicing it from next year or from next month. So your future revenue is already tied in. Unless otherwise, you are pushing the money into a capital expenditure where you can hold on to the asset. Should the servicing become a problem, you can sell the TV, you can sell the fridge, whatever it is because that's what you use the money for. But where you borrow for consumption, then naturally you have a problem. That, that's one. Two, there were some investment decisions that people took. Mm. They heard that there's this company that pays high interest rates. Mm. They rushed whatever they have, they went in there. When they only to withdraw the amount, and they're not getting the proceeds for the amount, they've lost money, so debt has been created. Mm. And that one is health. Mm. If you didn't do insurance for your health mm. or for your sibling and, you know, something hit at you, raising money becomes a difficult, so you go and end up borrowing. 
So all these things put pressure. In our part of the world, where families are dependent on the one who is creating money for them, education for family members can come in. So your sibling just got an admission at a university, mm -hmm. and there isn't much fund in the house. So they'll come and beg you. So you go and borrow those things. So these are the things that comes into it. And then also those who have credit lines at the banks, like overdraft, or they have cards that they use. So that they will do procurement that the things that they've bought, they don't really need it. But for the fact that they went to the shop and things are cheap, they will end up procuring it. So don't buy the things because it's cheap. Buy it because you need it. Mm -hmm. And once these things are being pumped out in your life, and you are utilizing money, mm. and the money that you are utilizing is not coming from yourself, but from OPM, other people's money, then you have borrowed. Mm. When you borrow, it will create debt for you. So these are some of the causes okay. that people have debt. So you've given us four. Keeping up appearances, investment decisions which are bad, health with no insurance, education needs which have not been planned for, and then procurement because things may be cheap. But do you admit that some of the debt could be caused by no fault of people? For example, what is happening in our economy now, as you said, you may have invested in a general institution, but because of the debt exchange and some of the things happening, people's savings may have been wiped out. So is it all the time that your debt is your fault? Or it's possible that based on external conditions, you can also be in debt? Thank you for that very critical question. Everything is your fault. Mm. Because the investment decision that you took, you should have looked at what if. Even savings at the bank. When you go to the bank early morning and you deposit your funds there, because you trust the bank, but you must also always ask yourself critical question. What if something happens? And therefore, you don't put all your eggs in one basket. So you must look at a certain way Mm -hmm. of managing your own expenditure, your own revenue streams, and then tie in with your age. So when it is that you've grown at a certain level, maybe you're reaching uh, 50 plus, your investment decisions has to be maybe you're buying treasurables. When you're young, you can invest in mutual funds. The crisis that we're having definitely will come out. Definitely will come out. So the things are too immediate. People are rushing and things. So when you are rushing, you don't make rational decisions. So those mutual funds, those who have lost the haircut and things, it's just for a period. It would bounce back. But what it is that if it's ba it bounces back, then the fund managers themselves should be paying themselves huge bonuses when they bounce back. Because people who have been punished to survive must also be helped when things improve. And that's the kind of statement that should come out from the investment decision or, or the policy makers that, listen, we have a problem now. We are suffering haircut. But when things bounce back, we'll help you out. I was just going to suggest that instead of zero, mm -hmm. I think they should be able to do some 5% for the first year. The for, interest you mean? They interest me. I mean, it should no way it should be zero. There must be something coming to you. So you know that the investment returns is lower than to say the investment rate is zero. So you need to have some five, I prefer to get 5%, next year 7%, 10% of growth, rather than losing totally and then having a 25% come, coming through. Mm. Something must be earned because mm. people are going to depend on that small return that comes in, even if it's 2, 3, 4% mm. to pay medical bills, because decisions that people make every now and then, they tie in with their age. So these are wild times. You've done this for over 20 years. Have you seen any times like this before? <laughs> no, not in my lifetime yet. Wow. I mean, we had a 2007 crisis. Mm. Um, it was nothing like this. We've heard about the Great Depression mm. and other spots where we've had some challenging economic mm. seasons. This one seems to be like quite severe. Mm. It's very unprecedented, as you say. So the, the question is, how do you, what do you need to know in times like this so you don't get drowned? What, what, what does a person need to know in times like these? Okay. So thank you very much. I want us to go back to start with where we are coming from. Mm -hmm. And the reason why it becomes important for us to do something mm -hmm. in order to secure 
our financial future in these turbulent times is mm -hmm. the condition that these times have created. Mm -hmm. We have come from the era that we used to call the VUCA. There was a lot of volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguities that mm -hmm. you have to factor into decision making. Mm -hmm. And then post COVID 2019, we've come into the era that we call the bunny, mm. where the world and everything has become so brittle. The level of fragility has increased. There's more anxiety, and okay. emphasis here is on the anxiety bit mm -hmm. that we all have to live with. People mm. are having sleepless nights. Mm. Uh, people are... Mm getting into depression and we have suicide rates going up yeah. in some jurisdictions mm -hmm. so that's the anxiety bit in mm -hmm. the bunny mm -hmm. and then we have the fact that it's a non-linear world and imagine how you could have two people hold the two ends of a rope versus when you just toss it and it becomes like a spaghetti and it's round 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 and you have to figure out your way to get to the end of the rope nothing is linear now um, we used to have that level of predictability. So if I invest A today, tomorrow, this is how much I'm going to get out. The world no longer is offering you that predictability. So that's what the N for nonlinear mm -hmm. really stands for. And then we have I, which is incomprehensibility. Wow. And I'm touching on this just to prepare our minds. Because if you continue to live in the world pre-COVID, mm. where we didn't have to deal with VUCA or BUNNY, and you think that you must understand things and they must make sense logically before you move. I'm sorry, we are not mm -hmm. going back to that world and you are going to be left behind. Mm -hmm. If you are looking for the linearity that we were used to, mm -hmm. it's no longer there. Mm -hmm. And once you change the mindset, then it becomes easier for you to begin to navigate your world yourself through this new world that we call the bunny. Mm. So that's where I wanted to start mm. from. Okay. We, you would agree with me that the backdrop that I've just painted has mm. the tendency to shake your comfort and um, sort of throw you into a lot of chaos and uncertainty mm. and you want to cling on to something for hope. Mm -hmm. And this is where my conversation really wants to start from. And I want to start with the security needs that have been created. Okay. You alluded nicely to the macro mm -hmm. indicators and how they are looking like global inflation. It's not mm -hmm. just a Ghana thing, mm -hmm. but it's across the world. Questions that is probably on people's mind would include, how far can I survive depending on my current financial resources or buffer? The other question is, with what certainty can I sustain my mm. earning power? Mm -hmm. You see people are being laid off. Mm. You are asking yourself how close it is getting. Mm. Um, what's the likelihood that in three years' time that you plan to marry, that you would have accumulated enough, um, that your wife may be working, etc. Mm -hmm. So there are these uncertainties to deal with. And mm -hmm. you are curious how to sustain your earning power. The other question that may be on a lot of people's minds is, who are in my support mm -hmm. system or network? This is mm. a very crucial mm. question. Mm. When I'm feeling all alone, when I'm feeling like I don't know where my next meal is going to come from, who are the people that I have that I might fall on? Mm -hmm. Because there may be those nights, those moments where you need to fall on someone. Mm -hmm. And then the other question is the what ifs. Mm -hmm. The what if seem unlimited. What if I fall sick? What if I'm involved in some disability? I become disabled. There's the laid off bit. Mm -hmm. There's uh, maybe you are dependent on some breadwinner mm -hmm. or someone that guarantees your income. What if something happens to them? Mm. If you are an entrepreneur, you are wondering what happens if my business should collapse? Mm -hmm. What happens with these haircuts, conversations, hmm. and debt exchange that we talk about? Mm -hmm. And then there are people that have withdrawn their cash successfully, taking a haircut of sorts hmm. and hiding them under their beds. What if there's robbery? Hmm. Hmm. Okay, so hmm. these are some of the security needs that have been created hmm. uh, by the environment that we find the, so full the, the turbulence many. yes so yes. how can i survive who is in my support network mm -hmm. uh can i keep earning an income what if sickness happens what if haircut happens so on the basis of all these questions 
what uh, where do I start from? Right. Okay, how do I reset myself before even going to a plan of action? What do I need to know around this period to respond to this? Brilliant question. And I want to say start from having a bit of knowledge and understanding of finances, mm -hmm. what we call financial literacy. Okay. The times have changed, mm -hmm. but the fact that you need to apply these basic knowledge has not changed. Mm. You have to still use the knowledge. And I like to say you have to take a double dose. Okay. I like to use the paracetamol example. If you have a migraine, I'm not a doctor. Mm -hmm. uh, you probably would have to take two paracetamol pills, whereas if it's a mild pain, you can just take one pill. Mm -hmm. So this is how you should apply mm -hmm. the financial literacy. And the aspect that I want people to focus on is the fact, uh, the principle of time value of money, mm -hmm. which says that if you can get paid today, if you can negotiate for it today, by mm -hmm. all means do that. Mm -hmm. Because that money that you would get today will be worth a lot more mm -hmm. than if it took longer for you to have access to that mm -hmm. money. So the mm -hmm. time value of money basically saying that a dollar in your hand today, a Ghana CD in your hand today is worth Hmm. more than the same nominal value promised you at a later time. So let that guide you in the choices and decisions that you make. Mm -hmm. Risk, return, positive relationship has not changed in turbulent times. Mm -hmm. If you see any opportunity that look like it's too juicy, too promising, mm -hmm. understand that it's equally coming with a much higher risk. Mm -hmm. Risk meaning that there's a probability you lose whatever you put in to start with. Okay. There is a liquidity reward. Mm. When you part company with your money, mm -hmm. that discomfort of not having your cash in your hand, you get some reward for it. Okay. And so when you pull all the money and you want to put it under your pillow or somewhere, and you are very liquid in your own macro setup, note that you are not going to earn any return for that. Let me quickly add that it's important in these times that you have liquidity, but don't overdo it. So you are the senior manager for broker-led corporate distribution. What does that mean? Okay, so for insurance businesses, we have channels through which insur insurance is sold. Mm -hmm. And one of the key channels is the broker channel, okay. where we have intermediaries called brokers. These are companies which are duly licensed by the regulator and mm -hmm. National Insurance Commission mm -hmm. to sell insurance mm. uh, in partnership with uh, insurance companies. So they sell the products of the various insurance companies. So some insurance sales come from brokers? Yes. As against what? Agents okay. and then direct. All right. All right. Yeah. All right. So a broker can then match supply to demand. Brilliant. So let's talk <coughs> about insurance and financial protection. I mean, what does that mean? Okay, so financial protection means having some financial arrangements in place, mm -hmm. which is able to cushion you or mm. to help you mm. uh, should the unfortunate event happen. Okay. So uh, you may have a house, uh, the house can be mm. caught up in fire, mm. or there can be a flood which can destroy the house. Mm. If you have some financial arrangement in place in terms of insurance, it can give you protection mm -hmm. against the loss mm. you use you suffer mm -hmm. because of a certain unfortunate event. Mm. Uh, it could be loss of job, it could be critical illness, uh, it could be death, it could be injury, it could be anything uh, unforeseen mm. that can really hit you so bad that you may not be able to survive mm. without having in place those financial arrangements. Mm. So apart from insurance, um, you can also have some investments okay. and then some savings. Mm. But particularly key uh, uh, for financial protection is insurance. insurance yes. so it's almost like insurance is the one that guarantees some protection when unexpected things happen. Yes, because uh, even if you have investment, you may never know the extent to which mm. the financial implication could be, and mm. your investment may not be able to sort you out. I see. Later, we'll talk about the various things that are insurable, oh, right. what you can insure against and what you can't do again. But what is the starting point in attaining financial security? Okay, so before I go to that, let me also say something a little about insurance mm -hmm. and what insurance means generally. Okay. It, is, it is an agreement, okay, mm -hmm. in which one party, uh, in exchange for a fee, mm -hmm. agrees to reimburse the other party. Mm -hmm. So, so the, the party that agrees to reimburse is the insurance company. Mm -hmm. The one who is being reimbursed is mm -hmm. the client or the insured. Mm -hmm. The fee 
is the premium, all okay. right? And generally, there are two main types of insurances. Mm -hmm. You have life insurance, which is more of long-term in nature, mm -hmm. and then you have non-life, which mm -hmm. is generally referred to as general business. Okay. These are short-term also in nature, mm. those two main aspects so of insurance. So under general, you have things like Motor, motor insurance, marine very common. insurance. Marine. Yes, yes. Uh, so so in Ghana, which, which is the commonest type of insurance in Ghana? Um, these days, okay, the, the most common is a motor insurance motor. because by law, you are required to insure your vehicle. So you can't number use, one. Yes. After that, you have what? There are several of them. Just from when, the top of your head, of the top of your head, which are the common top five areas of insurance apart from life i'm talking okay, about so, life now so five uh, fire insurance fire is also apart from motor fire so insurance motor, fire, marine insurance marine. what's marine, marine insurance marine insurance is goods that are transported oh. by sea or even by air that's why they talk of cif yes. cost insurance and freight, freight so yes. when you put a, a, your car on the ship from canada or wherever yes you must insure it yes you must insure it because if it hits a, a tornado or something yes so okay. for both the goods and then the vessels themselves okay so the aircrafts and then the ships uh, that we see around are all insured so there's motor there's marine, marine there's when you say fire, fire insurance uh, for buildings mm -hmm. for warehouses it mm -hmm. could be a warehouse it could be an office it could be a home it could mm -hmm. be a shop mm -hmm. both the building does the structure itself and then the contents mm -hmm. So if it's an office, your office content, mm. your furniture, your equipment, mm -hmm. if it's a school, hospital, okay. the same thing. If it's a warehouse, the stock, whether it's bags of rice or sacks of uh, flour, what have you, all those can be insured under fire insurance. So that's fine. And what else, what, what other areas of insurance do we have? We have personal insurance. Personal? Uh, yes, personal is accident insurance. So uh, taking insurance for your person. For yourself. So that in case, in case you get injured or you die, Mm. Or, uh, uh, God forbid, you have insurance coming in to pay some compensation, a benefit to you. Okay. Uh, so travel accident insurance is, is also common. So accident one is like, so assuming you're a worker and you have accident insurance, it means that is the insurance to cover your medical treatment or is to help you whilst you are not working to get Okay, somebody. so there are aspects of it. If you go into the details, there's the medical benefits, okay. there's a temporal benefit for a, a, a temporal a, when you don't have opportunity to work. So you stay in the hospital temporal for a while. Disposition. Yes, or where there's permanent disability okay. or death. Okay. okay. So medical, so, temporal, all those ones are in permanent, there. death, all of that coming okay. to the personal accident cover. And then you say there's also, you mentioned the travel, travel insurance. Travel insurance. It's also common these mm -hmm. days. It's a requirement. A lot of the uh, embassies will require that you have some uh, Where insurance. Travel insurance means what? what? Whilst you travel abroad. So what uh, are you insuring in particular? You insure against anything happening to you whilst you travel. Whilst you travel. Yes. Yeah, so it could be anything. Injury, death. Uh, loss of luggage. Oh, hospitalization. So there are aspects of yes. travel insurance you can. Yes. I see. So you can show your bags. Yes, your luggage. All of that is a component. So you will choose mm. uh, whichever you want. Some packages come with standard mm. amounts or compensation levels. Can you for insure these. yourself against being sacked from work? Yes. So you can insure yourself. That's a loss of job. Okay. okay. So. For life insurance, you, you have something like family income protection plan, okay. which can take care of unemployment in case you suffer. Even apart from loss of job, if you suffer some critical illness mm. and as a result you're unable to work and all of that, mm. the, 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 the bills you have to pay because of all those things coming to Can pay. you insure your machines? So let's assume we are CTFM, CTTV, cameras, yes. studio your, equipment. Your equipment, can so like them? I mentioned, yes. Mm. You can insure all those equipment. Drones, if you use drones, right. you can insure all of those things. Yes. Wow. That, that's, so it's, it's a vast area. Very, very vast, Bernard. And I can imagine that there are newer, newer products coming as human interaction become more complicated. Yes, so even for us at Enterprise Insurance, you know the third party, the motor third party cover, standard cover, provides compensation for the other person. That's you run into a pedestrian, you knock him down, he may be injured or could even die. Mm. You can run into another person's vehicle, another person's mm. property, cures by the roadside or whatever. Those are compensated for under the standard motor third party. Yeah. Wow. We have gone ahead to come up with what we call the third party amplified, where we say that for, for damage to your vehicle, we will provide compensation in terms of mm. uh, some minor uh, 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 damages into mm. your windscreen, your side mirrors, and then some minor scratches mm. to the vehicle. These are not covered 
under the standard with the third party. We'll come back we to that. So let, let's talk. Let's talk about the starting point. Right. For because don't forget this week our focus is on laying the right financial foundation. A couple of days ago, we had a guest who was talking about how to get out of debt. We've been talking about investment fundamentals, and today we want to see the role insurance plays in the financial equation. But before we come to the question, don't forget this is the Effective Living Series. This is actually day three of week four. And my guest is Michael Otulabi, who is from Enterprise Insurance. And we're trying to understand the basics of insurance. So let's talk about the, the starting point in attaining financial security. Yes, yeah, so the starting point would be to do a self uh, assessment. Mm. You know, uh, we go to school and learn all those things, but we don't apply it at the mm -hmm. at the self level. We mm -hmm. do it in the organization. But you need to analyze your risk yourself. Mm. So you tell yourself, okay, I'm a young man or a young lady. I mm. have a car. I've started working. I have a car. Have I insured it? If that car should be damaged, what happens? Mm. Or I'm a young man who has hassled combine some few CDs to be able to get a, lit, a small car to do Uber. Uh, and that's, that's what I live on. If something should happen mm. to that car, mm. what happens? Countries with much more sophisticated financial centers, the city in London, UK, US, they are less financialized than Ghana. And by that, I mean, if you take the whole economy, manufacturing is much more significant than just financial services. Is that part of our problem as a country, the fact that we have so many financial instruments, so many financial companies, and yet real value creation is not that high? Um, you're perfectly right. Mm. You're perfectly right. Um, and I love your use of manufacturing because it's a proxy for a company's ability to solve its own problems, mm -hmm. right? Um, the thing about sectors like finance, and law, for instance, is that they must serve other sectors mm. in order to be useful. Mm. Finance really finds a meaning in financing the real economy, those who are doing stuff, those who are building stuff, right? Because the essence of finance, and for someone who studied finance and economics, the basic reason why the financial services sector exists is intermediation. Someone has excess money, someone needs money, you match them efficiently at a good price, right? One that's affordable which to the, the one interest rate. who needs it, which is the interest rate, and acceptable to the one who has the excess money, okay? That's the basic function of finance. That's the basic function of finance, and mm -hmm. to help people protect their wealth. Mm -hmm. um, but as you know, people respond to incentives. And in Ghana, we sort of perverted it to finance basically chasing easy returns instead of solving hmm. problems. Wow. So we're in a situation where our own capital has no appetite, has no hmm. incentive to solve our problems. Hmm. So. Um, when, whenever everybody knows, when you're doing any meaningful project, you need to go and find money abroad, right? Because Ghanaian banks won't finance it. Now, when you go abroad, the bank or the private equity fund or whoever is giving you money is probably funded by their pensions. So the South African equivalent of SNIT, for instance, the Public Investment Corporation, PIC, has funded a lot of infrastructure, even here in Ghana and across Africa, but particularly in their own country. In Ghana, um, our pension funds hold nearly 80% of their value in government securities. By law. Right? No, no, <laughs> some of you it know, by I, law I, now. I, some of it, but I think they also unfairly blame the regulator mm -hmm. for two reasons. One is, even if it was by law, whenever it's in their interest, they go and lobby the regulator. So why haven't they lobbied the regulator it's, it's, to change it? Mm. In, in fairness, they've done quite a bit of it now. I think uh, the money they could put into private uh, projects has gone up from 5% to 15%. You know, so, so there are, we are seeing changes. 
And those changes will likely be accelerated by the current problems that we have. Wow. Let me summarize so yes. far. This is effective living series, and we're talking to you, Abene Amponsa. He's a financial guy, but he's into entrepreneurship, real estate, and other things. And my question for this uh, morning, which I believe the question for the season, is where do you invest your money now? There's a debt exchange program. People have lost confidence in bonds. Stock market is not doing well. If you check the GSE All Share Index, compared their 2022 December to previous years, almost everything is down. Housing markets are not doing that well. If you look at the proxy for that, even cement purchases is coming down. So we're talking about the end, or at least a temporary cessation of easy money. Now, how do you invest in real things? And in our last segment of the show, we'll talk about some real things. He has four areas he wants us to invest in, but we're still building <coughs> the foundation. So the over-financialization is also a problem. So these are all yes. structural issues. But don't forget, this is a personal finance conversation. Yes. All right. So how do you... So what should you think about an economy like this? Because you're an economy that is going through a financial upheaval. Inflation is over 50%. The banks are not really lending. I analyzed some banks. A lot of them, their interest income is from financial instruments. So you are right. Um, so what, what do people with excess money or people who have saved enough to invest, how should they think about storing up that money or letting that money work? Yeah. OK. So, um, but, but just a little step back and then we'll go for yes. it. The, the link between personal finance mm -hmm. and the structural issues is that what you're comfortable with personally mm -hmm. is most likely what you're going to, if you're a regulator, for instance, you're going to stipulate in your regulations. A regulator who holds 100% of his own wealth in treasury bonds is unlikely to understand why someone wants to invest in infrastructure. So that, that is the link. That's a very big hint. Yeah, that is the <laughs> link, right? But um, that aside, mm. um, so. Wow. That's, so I, I, this is a very powerful one. I, I think you are giving me a clue as to what to discuss later on radio. <laughs> because a regulator who stores majority of his wealth in treasury bonds is not likely to understand why people must invest in real things. Because yeah. most of their money is made from just interest. Yes. Wow. So that, that is, uh, that's deep. We're, we're all products of our experiences. That's deep. If you've never invested in a business, mm. and you keep hearing business is risky, business is risky, and now you're put in a situation where you determine where people invest, you know, it's a steep learning curve. And most probably by the time you get there, you're a bit old. You can't teach an old dog new tricks. So, you know. <laughs> wow. It's, yeah. Wow. It's, so that, that's so having said learning. this, yeah. clearly, somebody like you, who's not really a fan of too much passive income, will not be as affected as people who have been just buying and selling money. So obviously, yeah. you, have, you are more diversified. And you are also more real than, um, I'm talking real money than just paper value. Um, that is, um, that's partially correct. Okay. Because whatever a person is into, whatever business a person is into, mm -hmm. your customers likely depend on their disposable income, which is now locked up somewhere. Mm. So mm -hmm. the effect may not be direct, mm -hmm. but the indirect effect may end up, you know, much the same as if it was direct. Mm. Um, but in terms of thinking about how to invest, um, when times are tough, mm -hmm. the difficulty makes people and all people, whether it's employees, um, when, when a company is going through tough times, you find that the employees behave better. They are more prompt to work because they know the company is suffering. And even if they are, it's not an altruistic uh, behavior to help the company to exit the tough times, they are afraid that if they have to go home, 
<laughs> yeah, so nothing to they chop. put on their belt. They come to work earlier. They come to work earlier. looking very happy. <laughs> <laughs> so, so um, that's just to say that when times are tough, people generally make better decisions mm. than when times are easy. Well, that will be all for today's edition of the City Business Edition here on 97.3 City FM, where we brought you highlights of all of the great conversations we had this week on the Effective Living series focused on financial foundations for 2023. I hope you didn't miss out on any part of it. Catch you same time next week. Let's connect on Twitter at M. Obudu. My name is Michael Obudu. Take care. As always, stay safe, stay informed. Formed and bye bye. My sweet My This is the City Breakfast Show, the city's biggest conversation. Join the conversation on the City Breakfast Show on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash city97.3, Twitter at twitter.com forward slash city973, and Instagram at instagram.com forward slash city973 with the hashtag CityCBS. smells great here and fresh my love ha. i wish i could stay in the shower all day <laughs> i know right nothing beats a bath with geisha soap it smells so good it lasts long and it's enriched with natural ingredients that work wonders for my skin mm -hmm. and it now comes with a fresh new look giving us even more reasons to love our geisha bar <laughs> new and improved geisha soap Great new look, better fragrance, same natural ingredients, still all lost arm. This advert is FDA approved. Be strong and last long. Like Geisha. Womex Bet. Easy betting, easy winnings. Womex Bet, the most reliable service to make deposits easily with high odds and numerous bonuses on the spot. Register now at womexbet.com.gh. Use promo code BESTOUTSGH. You get 300% bonus up to 3,445 Ghana CDs on your first deposit. Easy to use, easy to have a chance to win. Womex Bet, reliable bookmaker. Gambling can be addictive. Bet responsibly. Not for person under 18 years. This advertisement has been vetted and approved by the Gaming Commission. Central University, Ghana's leading private Christian university, has opened admissions for the 2022-2023 academic year. Degrees are available on our campuses in Mutual, ICGC Christ Temple, Abosokai, and Kumasi. Also enroll in our MBA with various specializations. Scholarships are available for needy but brilliant students. Call us on 0303-318-583 or visit our website at central.edu.gh for more information. Central University, raising transformational leaders through faith integrity and excellence. Aguna Aide, football from around the world. Fini Fini on HD Plus from 17 January 2023. Score HD is available only on HD Plus channel 151. Join the conversation on the City Breakfast Show on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash city97.3, Twitter at twitter.com forward slash city973, and Instagram at instagram.com forward slash city973 with the hashtag CityCBS. Wonderful morning and welcome to the Friday edition of Kickoff. My name is Benjamin Inketia. In the headlines, Ghana's Black Galaxies take on Niger this weekend in the quarterfinals of the Chan Tournament. Man United, Liverpool and Tottenham all involved in FA Cup action this weekend. And in the NBA, there were wins for the Cavs, the Clippers and the New York Knicks. <laughs> A 
right, let's get into the details now. And we begin from the camp of the Black Galaxies. They are preparing for a quarterfinal this weekend against Niger. That game is on Saturday. And they've switched camp from Constantine to Oran to continue with their preparations. Now, the team was involved in indoors training uh, yesterday as unfavorable weather conditions in Constantine prevented the players from training outside on the pitch. Head coach Anna Walker was impressed with the output of his players in the indoor physical session. Of course, yes, uh, I'm so excited. Uh, I think uh, during the week before our match against um, Sudan, it was raining the same thing. We have to do uh, such an exercise in here. And uh, it also helped. Today is raining and the uh, temperature is very high. But we have to do an endless exercise, which they have done, and they need to sweat because they are already fit in, in shape. So I'm really impressed and happy with the response that the players uh, gave out. You heard head coach of the Black Galaxies, Anno Walker, speaking. Then our assistant Black Galaxies head coach, Dr. Prosper Nate Ogum, also expressed his gratitude to the players for the seriousness and commitment attached to the training sessions. I think it's working because they know, uh, he knows his training content. He knows how to structure the training content. He knows how to organize the training content. And above all, no matter how challenging the exercises are or difficulty, difficult the exercises are. He, he has a nice way of encouraging them to, to, to be able to perform these exercises. So I think he has a, a good uh, uh, charisma. Okay. He has a good uh, uh, way of uh, dealing with them. That's why we are seeing what we are seeing. So assistant Black Galaxy's head coach Prosper Nate Ogum speaking about the training regime of uh, physical instructor Roy Ricky Romeo, which uh, the players seem to have enjoyed so far. Let's move on to some other stuff and let's get to the Ghana Premier League. And Mediama head coach Umar Rabi has promised to maintain his club's five-year unbeaten run against Hearts of Folk in Takwa. Now the Yellow and Moves will host the Phobians at the Akon Park on Saturday in March week 14 of the Bet Power. Premier League. Miriamah have beaten Hearts of Folk in four consecutive league games at Takwa, and Umar Rabi is confident that the streak, which dates back to 2017, will continue. We are not preparing differently, but you know players, their mentality when they are playing Kotoko or Haas, nobody tells them. Their mentality changed totally in the training grounds, and this is what we are seeing now. It's a game that is not going to be easy, but as you said, we, we are preparing very well to clinch the day when the day comes. Last year we beat them here. I know they will come for a revenge, but definitely we are also going to go again and then beat it. As we lost away from home, we will not stay here to even draw the game. We want to win and then get all the maximum three points here because our corn is our corn. So you had Umar Rabi, he is head coach or assistant head coach of Mediama Sporting Club. Let's get to some other stuff in the bet. Our Power Premier League continues Friday. There's Legon City versus Bechem United on Saturday. There's Tamale City taking on BBNE Gold Stars. There's uh, also Mediama versus Hearts of Folk. And then on Sunday, there's Great Olympics versus Karela uh, FC. RTU will be up against in Swatraman. There's Adriana Stars versus Accra Lions. Samatex will be up against Kim Faisal. Brekun Chelsea take on Dreams FC. And then Asante Kotoko will be up against Kotoku Royals. Let's get to the FA Cup. Um, let's see what's happening in the FA Cup round of 16. Walsall up against Leicester City. Accrington take on Leeds United. Man United up against Reading. There's Preston versus Tottenham. And then Brighton and Hove Albion will also be up against Liverpool Football Club. Let's get to some basketball to finish it off. And let's get to action from last night's NBA. Uh, big games happened. The New York Knicks uh, were in prime form uh, when they took on the Boston Celtics. Old rivals, 120-117. The Knicks won that one on the road um, at the TD Garden. Jalen Brunson and Julius Randle coming through with big performances there for the Knicks. And then the Dallas Mavericks were up against the Phoenix Suns. Also a road game for the Mavericks. Luka Doncic, he rode his ankle and had to um, leave the game. But Spencer Dinwiddie took over 
and then dominated the game for the Mavs. They eventually won that game. The Brooklyn Nets also uh, lost at home to the Pistons. The Hornets lost to um, the Bulls. And then there was also a defeat for the Cavs. You know, the Cavs actually won against the Rockets. The Clippers, they also won at home against the San Antonio Spurs. Now, the All-Star teams have also been named in the NBA. LeBron will be All-Star captain for the Western Conference and Giannis Antetokounmpo. He will be All-Star captain for the Eastern Conference. So that's what's going on as far as basketball is concerned. That's all for this morning's edition of Kickoff. My name is Benjamin Inketia. Kickoff was brought to us by Lecheho. There's more sports at citysportsonline.com. Trust the process. The biggest things often start small. No matter where you are now, the most important decision you'll make today is knowing where you'll be tomorrow. All you have to do is take the next step. Believe in your journey and go with passion. Because when you go with passion, you go big. You explore the possibilities. You create the tomorrow of your dreams. So come along and let's go big with our passion. Apply for a loan now and power your ambitions. Get plugged in. Let's go big. Power by Lesejo. Join the conversation on the City Breakfast Show on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash city97.3, Twitter at twitter.com forward slash city973, and Instagram at instagram.com forward slash city973 with the hashtag CityCBS. Delightfully delicious option whenever and wherever the occasion calls for me. And list all your debt, irrespective of the amount involved. Mm -hmm. Many a time, Mami Akam, which is the, the canteen shop that you usually buy food from, sometimes you are owing three days, four days, you haven't mm -hmm. paid. So when mm -hmm. you compile your list, you end up losing that one out. So when you do a lot of Mami Akam around, you probably would think that, hey, that's, that's a lot of money. So you need to have paper, pen, and this time around, I will encourage you to use red pen to, to write it. That shows the thing that's going. In other words, you need to have money. So you list from your uh, mortgage, if you have one, from your car loan, if you have one, mm -hmm. from education loan, if you have one, mm -hmm. the food, if you have one, loan from the bank, if you have one, companies outstanding, if you have one, I will use from your friends if you have one. Mm -hmm. So you need to have a whole list of it. That's one. Mm -hmm. Know yourself. Mm -hmm. As much as you can, try to know yourself. Okay. And I will want to um, uh, entreat for those of you out there who want to know yourself, mm -hmm. we have the ability, we have the technology, we have the lab analysis that will help you to know yourself. So you will not be just placing yourself in assumption and interpretation of other people. So when they ask you who you are, you'll be able to tell who exactly you are because that influences your decision, your choices, and even help you to manage your life. You don't want to leave this world without really coming to know who you are. Mm. So you're just trying to be like other people till you die without really coming to know yourself. Mm -hmm. So when you get in touch, we can give you what you have to do in order to get your lab analysis so that you can be so proud of yourself mm. and even your children. Mm. So you don't struggle to know what your children will do in the future and all that. That is just a plus that you can give to yourself as mm. your New Year package. And then you need to actually question your opinions. of your We are resorting to more expensive chemicals to be able to get and uh, to be able to reduce the process losses. Uh, if you go to Odasu, if we are not using the polyelectrolyte, mm. we might not have been able to even get up to 30% of the water to send to Obuasi. But with the use of the polyelectrolyte, we are doing about 50%. Mm. And so the, at every time you have to increase costs. 
If you are using the aluminum sulfate, you will have to use the more aluminum sulfate you put in your water, the more other chemicals that you put in to correct your, your, your pH level. So at all times, the cost continues to go very, very high. And I think that if PURC can allow us to pass on the cost to the citizens, yes, politically it might have uh, some implications. But when people begin to see the cost, I'm sure we'll all go onto the rivers and directly get the people who are doing that damage away. If we don't take that seriously, I'm sure uh, even our rivers will die. What is the worst case scenario we will see in the next six months if we don't stop this now? You've said 100% in some areas polluted, 60 some. Yeah. What's the worst yeah. case scenario with regards to our water security as a country in the yeah. next six months? The immediate one will be that probably we will not get uh, treated water from that water company. They will have to shut down. Uh, the long term is that most of their equipments will uh, be destroyed forever and they have to bring in so it goes back to the investments but apart from just as getting water to drink agriculture is affected already uh, we are going to have food security issues not just water security uh, economic growth will suffer we are already in a system where we, we are struggling to see how best we can come out of this so uh, it is, it is a complete system. What is the worst case scenario we will see in the next six months if we don't stop this now? You've said 100% in some areas polluted, 60 some. Yeah. What's the worst yeah. case scenario with regards to our water security as a country in the yeah. next six months? The immediate one will be that problem. I think that I'm saying is a mental problem. <laughs> it's a mental problem. It's a mindset problem that you think you can steal today and still eat your cake tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I think that, uh, if you could go to the next slide, if I, uh, that we have to appreciate to fix and restore is always more expensive than to spoil. Mm -hmm. Spoiling takes an instant. Yeah. Those of you who are in married or relationships, you, you slap your, your spouse. I'm not recommending this. <laughs> it, it takes a second to do that action. But I'm telling you, pay for it for the for rest, rest of your of life. Your life yeah. So it is better not to spoil it in the first place. My third point is that a full-time problem like Galamsey cannot be solved by part-time responses. Response. Cost of production has gone equally very high. Uh, my colleague from Ghana Water Company is talking of uh, costs, but I will just uh, use products for us to understand. Last year, we were using 200 bags of aluminum sulfate a day. This year, we are using 300 bags of aluminum sulfate. That is something at a Ghana size. Mm -hmm. What it means is that Ghanaians on our own cannot protect our water bodies. And that is what has translated into the illegal uh, mining, those who are mining in the river, because they do not see the need to protect that resource. And so I think that uh, the Galam say yes, but there are other activities that are destroying our water. And we must expand 
the protection to all our water bodies. And that's why we have to call for the strengthening and resourcing of the water resource.
January was like the biggest month. So like there was a data set on new vehicle registrations. Mm. So it's like it peaks around February mm -hmm. and then it plummets down. Mm -hmm. So I don't know whether it's because people buy cars at Christmas and rest at January. Yeah. For some reason, I, I'll probably show you the chart. January was so high yeah. and everything else was so low. It's, it's because of... So. Uh, in large part, the fact that people would rather register their vehicles in the new year mm -hmm. so that it retains a certain resale value mm -hmm. as opposed to registering it somewhere in the middle of the year. Um, a new year comes and then if you want to sell it off, it becomes a problem. You'll notice that many of these uh, DV plays you see around Accra are used by persons who have bought their vehicles but would rather delay registration Mm. Until so you're saying it's not the buying in December, it's the registration in January. Yeah, so if I buy the car in October, I'll wait till January. Oh, yeah, people, people do, do it, that. Really? but I don't get that because isn't it more important to look at the year of manufacture of the yeah. car? I mean, oh, the uh -huh. when you register it, it's neither here nor there, it's yeah. how old the car is, right? In Ghana, it and doesn't how... work like that. I know, but I think it's strange. Yeah, that's many things because that <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't make any sense because somebody can uh -huh. get like a 2009 Toyota Corolla, yes, yeah, register yeah. it in 2023, and uh -huh. it doesn't make the car a 2023 so, model car, it's uh, still a 2009 Corolla. So, guys, look at this is yeah. the the uh, monetary policy committee's report mm. mm -hmm. for vehicle registration. From September 2020 to September 2022. So it's a two year spread, right? Mm -hmm. So you have a thousand vehicles average, um, no, 10,000 average September 2020. Comes down to around 9,000. Then it jumps to 50,000 January 2021. Can you imagine? Then it comes down all the way to another 10,000 by November 2021. Jumps again to 50,000 in January 2022. Comes again. So I'm guessing that by end of this month, mm -hmm. it would have gone back to about 50,000. 50, yeah. you know? mm -hmm. People like the new number plates yeah. because they give them some value. And then also, it's new year, new vibe. <laughs> uh, but, but the big part of the problem, really, is people storing their used vehicles for registration in January. Mm. Uh, you would rather want to register it in January and, and retain some value. But it's a very important point you made that it is a question of when the car was manufactured, yeah. not when it was registered. But for some reason, in Ghana, the thing doesn't really work like that. Mm. Yeah. I just thought it was an interesting point. Mm. Anyway, anytime you eat, food and sugar gets trapped in your teeth, leading to tooth decay, gum disease, and in some cases... A bad breath. Now, brushing your teeth every morning and night with Pesodent Cavity Fighter gives your teeth the protection they need, leaving you with 10 times stronger teeth. Now, the Pesodent Cavity Fighter is fortified with pro fluoride and micro calcium ingredients, sealing tiny and invisible holes in your teeth. This prevents cavities, keeps your teeth strong and mouth healthy. Pesodent Cavity Fighter, maximum cavity protection, 10 times stronger. Uh, teeth, 25 years of educating to brush day and night. And you can also ask about the Pepsodent Herbal and the Pepsodent Charcoal. Call 0800-200-030. Pepsodent, every smile matters. And a global standard luxury wristwatch made right here in Ghana for that special summer with their name customized in it. Yeah, let's go for it. That's what we call a timeless gift. Caveman Watches is giving a whopping 50% discount on the cost of customizing a name inside any of their exquisite luxury watches for any purchase above 2,000 cities this season. And this is until 15th February. Visit Caveman Watches on all platforms. Better still, you can walk into any of our showrooms and factory on the Ajunga North Road adjacent the new Astro Tef to place uh, and order even, uh, to place an order. You can even join the process of making your own bespoke luxury watch. Yeah. Do they do wall clocks too? I, I'm sure they do. I mean, you can go to cavemanwatches.com or you can call them on 055-751- Six seven four four. Uh, do we still do wall clocks? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I want the yeah. one that they would write the car. Ever. Visit visit them. Visit them. <laughs> visit them. And it will be sounding. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's the Imperial Insure and Win promo from now until thirty first of March. Insure a vehicle with Imperial General and win handsome rewards. Just ensure and pick your rewards, fewer coupons, gift vouchers, special souvenirs, and more. We're giving you a free one-year life insurance cover as part of your motor insurance cover. 
So call Imperial General today, 0302-788-955. That's 0302-788-955. Or talk to any of our agents across the country to, for further information. Imperial General, solid protection. Solid protection. Yeah, man. Well, from protection to prospectus. Yes. Yes. Prospectus Ghana, they've introduced a new short code. So it's star 447 star mm. 899 hash. Mm. Mm. This is to help parents and guardians make installment payments towards mm. items required for their ward school admissions. It's mm. safe and it's convenient. And Prospectus Ghana also provides a one-stop shop for all your school items. Mm. And they supply good quality brand chalk white A4 sheets mm. for all your printing jobs. Mm. You can locate Prospectus Ghana on the graphic road. They're opposite to to Ghana in Accra or call them on 0500 600 607. Prospectus Ghana, your one-stop shop for all school items and stationery. All right. And the University of Ghana Business School has opened applications for its one-year sandwich master's programs. The programs on offer are MSc in Accounting and Finance, Clinical Leadership and Management, Financial Risk Management, and so much more. For more inquiries, visit the UGBS website on ugbs.ug.edu.gh. Mm. You can also call 0595-508-270. And the Institute of Chartered Accountants turns 60 years. As part of their anniversary celebrations, a float will drive through some principal streets of Accra. And uh, starting from ICAC Secretariat, now they did all of that yesterday, I believe. And the Thanksgiving ceremony and launch of their anniversary comes off today, Friday the 27th of January, and that will be at 4 p.m. The venue is the Accra International Conference Center. All students, members and fellows of the Institute, and all stakeholders and the general public are cordially invited to join the Institute and celebrate this significant milestone. Long live ICAG, long live Ghana.
every year Ghanaian students on scholarship abroad mm -hmm. complain that they've been abandoned. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think there was one that came in this morning that, that I felt we should highlight. Mm -hmm. They're saying that they've not had their stipends paid for eight, eight months. months. Yeah. They've been evicted from their rooms, mm -hmm. schools sacking some of them, you know, and this is mostly the United Kingdom. Yeah. I mean, you were in the UK mm -hmm. and you interacted with the guys in charge of the scholarship secretariat. Mm -hmm. What insights did you glean about the way they manage their process? And why does this always happen? So it, it, it's a very unfortunate um, situation, really. Uh, because, as I always say, before you really can concentrate and learn, you actually need something in your belly. And especially where you find yourself in a foreign land mm -hmm. with virtually little or no family member to or members to lean on, mm -hmm. it is a very, very difficult situation. And in that part of the world, the landlord is not going to negotiate with you terms of payment. Once the month is ended and, you know, the middle of the month is there, mm -hmm. as, as the case may be, you would have to pay your rent. Mm -hmm. it, there, you, you can't go and say, oh, Charlie. they have not sent me money. And so some, and it is very cold Charlie. outside. Mm -hmm. Charlie, you can't afford Charlie. to be homeless in that country. Trust me. And where you think that you can go and live with a, a colleague you or a friend, with, Charlie, no. with who? Who, who, who? To pay your bills for you. <laughs> it is tough. It's, it's annoying. Yeah. So it is sad that we still have these reports coming in. In fact, speaking to many of the people who mm -hmm. are, or who have benefited from the scheme, mm -hmm. the problem seems to be that the releases that should go to the secretariat okay. are either not going or where they go, mm. the system is so choked that it is impossible to pay for every single Ghanaian student on a government of Gala scholarship outside this country. You understand? <laughs> and because the system hasn't been streamlined as to ensure that only courses that you need properly so-called yeah. to do outside mm -hmm. That should be done. Mm. It creates room for all manner of people to be given scholarship. Mm. So they are on scholarship, but those courses could easily have been studied in Ghana to make it possible for you to enjoy scholarship. Do you know the average amount they pay to these for these students? So if you are doing, for instance, a master's course in the UK, mm -hmm. for instance, if you're doing law, let's say LLB, mm -hmm. on average, you should spend about eighteen to 20,000 US dollars okay. if you're doing a two-year a two -year LLB course. Now, that doesn't take into consideration accommodation. Accommodation, give mm -hmm. or take, you're doing something around eight to 12,000 US dollars, depending mm -hmm. on where you want to be. Mm -hmm. And wow. then also, you need money to feed yourself. So a stipend that will help you to live through the month. Mm -hmm. And on average, again, if you're doing something around, say, $500, depending on where you live, mm -hmm. uh, not $500, 500 pounds, mm -hmm. between that and 800 pounds. You 500 should pounds have, a, a month? Exactly. You, you should have some comfort around that. <laughs> so the, the, the point is that some people are entitled to just fees. Do you understand? The terms and conditions of the scholarship will tell you that you are entitled to just fees. They will mm -hmm. pay tuition for you. Ask for food, they are finding yourself. Mm -hmm. Ask for accommodation, finding yourself. So what they do is to work on the sides as to raise some money to, do. to support themselves. Do we know how many Ghanaian students are on government scholarship abroad? I'm asking this because mm -hmm. the story I'm reading says there are quite a lot. Mm -hmm. And I'm also trying to calculate how much we spend on that. If you look at the exchange rate, mm -hmm. And then I want to compare that to whether it's even necessary. And sorry if you're a student abroad that I'm sort of discussing the generality of a scholarship now. When you need your money, you're already there. So they need to send your money. But I'm also thinking, if you look at the, the way universities in Ghana are struggling, mm -hmm. this week a lot of people have called me that they want me to help them pay their fees on COOP. And I've mm -hmm. said, okay, what course are you doing? Then they'll say, oh, I've been giving engineer, but I've been giving fee paying. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, why are you being giving fee paying if you got eight A's? Mm -hmm. And they're like, the investors are now increasing the quota for fee paying. So if mm. there are like 100 slots for engineering, they'll probably do 60 fee paying and 40 non-fee paying. Mm. Where fee paying means they are charging you like 12,000 or 15,000. I said, well, the scholarship I manage, I can't pay you 15,000. Go and get regular admission. Mm -hmm. You know, so I'm asking myself, the investors in Ghana seem to want more money. Mm -hmm. Private universities, some are even collapsing. Then you have a government scholarship secretariat that is paying 20,000 pounds 
or fifteen thousand pounds. No, it's twenty. Yeah. The least is eighteen thousand pounds. Yeah. So, and what what is the? Okay, so if you take if you take for example a student who is going to tech to do engineering, okay, even if I'm doing fee paying engineering tech, it won't be twenty thousand CDs. Even if I'm doing fee paying engineering, I, Caleb can check for me. It's probably twelve thousand CDs for engineering electrical, which is like the highest engineering at tech. Then you are paying somebody twenty thousand pounds to go and study something, maybe a master's in whatever. I, 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 there's something not right about that. Mm. Okay, now I, let me again state: we are not trying to diminish the seriousness of the problem that you have said. Because once you're on the scholarship, you should be paid. Mm -hmm. Bernard, we, you are actually emphasizing the problem that mm. we are where we are and unable to pay. Mm -hmm. Because we didn't take caution in giving students scholarships to universities where when we knew that we didn't have the means to pay. This is where we are. So it's not a diversion of funds? Because some some no, it's, it's, it, it, that's the, the policy allows them to do that mm. as things are. Mm. And we have forever said to the, the, the government in government house that look, don't use government money to pay universities outside of Ghana unless the courses are critical mm. and they don't have um, um, local alternatives. Local alternatives. You, you understand? Somebody wants to do business administration <laughs> and you take 18,000 pounds of government money and give it to them that they should go and sit in, say, University of Aberdeen. And you see, it, is, it doesn't make sense at all and I'm very passionate about this topic and time without number. So this is this is you're talking about master's degree now. Master's degree. Even even first degree. Yeah. Even first degree. Is there government scholarship for first degree? Yeah, ah, Papa. <laughs> they give but, but how, how, how does that work? <laughs> they have government scholarship for first degree as well. Abroad. Abroad. Hmm. And I'm saying that let's put the master's degree in focus. You are you, you are done with your first degree. You want to do a master's program. You have how many private universities in Ghana today? Oh, quite a lot. Quite a lot. Quite a, lot. a good number yeah. of private universities. Let's find out how many of them have benefited from government scholarships. Mm. Mm. Central University, Valley View University, mm. Ashesi University. That's how good. many yeah. government scholarships end up there? And you are not seeing that by by redirecting the government funds to these universities, you are creating employment. You don't see that. So for you, the whole idea of using government money to send people abroad should cease. It's criminal. It should cease. It is criminal. It doesn't make sense because if you empower a, a central university, and I'm using central as university example, to represent, as you to. know, mm. you are creating employment mm. here. here in Ghana and the fees, because they will employ. And the fees are cheaper. Of course. And the fees are cheaper. You know what? 18,000 mm -hmm. £18, pounds a year is 270,000 cities. <laughs> is the value of that education ten times what you get in Ghana? It is not. So what is the benefit of that? It gives you a certain experience. Okay? It gives you in the short term, but in the long term, there's nothing different. And it's funny, all of us have schooled abroad. Yes. UK, US, UK, China, UK. Bernard, <laughs> which scholarship took you to the UK? Shevening. Shevening scholarship. Yeah, man. When they gave you the Shevening scholarship, why didn't they look for a school in the US for you? Hey! <laughs> Charlie, mm. the seven came with UK so, education. Yeah. Uh, yeah. uh, no, they they take their money, yeah, man. To, their, to, <laughs> to give it to, to their, their own people. Yeah. It's a cycle. I mean, they are with, empowering their own schools. UK but today. as for us, we know better. We are more exposed than even the people who brought the West scholarship. What so is, we what, take what, what, our what is the history? Maybe, maybe the history can help us unravel the way it's continued. As yeah, in, the history is always tied into need. Mm. And developmental needs of the of, of the of so the in those country. times there was there was probably a justification for it. Of course, in those times, in those days, and in those days there were bigger scholarships even from outside. And in fact, mm. till today, there are still justifications that can be made. Of course, for because for specific, for instance, if you need brain, uh, what you have, you know, vascular surgeon, 
and you want you to produce them in numbers. It may not entirely be... Those are critical uh -huh. areas. So you, critical, so you send them outside. Or maybe there's a developing field. I mean, when we're trying to deal with our oil discovery and all of those areas, there are specific needs that's within that's that People went to Aberdeen to do oil and gas. Okay. <laughs> Which is okay, because, you see, it was tied to an industry. Okay? Mm. Look, do you know that it got to a time... In this, uh, in in, our, in 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 this whole history of oil and gas in Ghana, that we didn't have um, qualified welders, in industrial Ghana. welders in Ghana. Mm. Oh, normal welder? No, it's not normal. It's it's uh, co co qualified, qualified. Yes. certified. The Petroleum Commission had to start a program to oh, really? train welders in Canada. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is proper welding. Yes. Welding, see, welding see, on the oil why would you destroy a polytechnic? Mm. And then you want to have a, an oil and gas industry. Won't you go to Canada to so, go and so, learn so, how to so, work? So let's unpack this. You're saying that if you spend an average of 20,000 pounds, so let's assume there's even 100 students. So that 20,000 pounds times 100, that's... Um, in fact, I'm just looking at some story on, on the numbers. Uh, yes. This is a story from uh, 2022. Mm, I want to get that. And numbers. it says about 2,000 uh, Ghanaian foreign students stranded. Good. And so it says that it's by the Daily Graphic, their website. Mm. So let's take the numbers one by one. You have mm -hmm. 2,000 students. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And the average, I wish I knew the average amount they paid for that. Okay. So depending on the level of study, which ranges from the first degree to Doctor of Philosophy, the students receive between $300 and $500 per year for their books, which is normally paid in the last quarter. But if, also, if the school fees is £20,000, yeah. that's $40 million. 40 million. Because if you have 2,000 students and you must buy about 20,000 mm -hmm. pounds or mm -hmm. dollars, mm -hmm. that's 40 million you, uh, hard currency yeah. for the 2,000 students. For the 2,000 students. Yeah, because you are, I'm just doing a calculation. 2,000 mm -hmm. times, my math is weak now, <laughs> times $20,000. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's about 40 billion dollars. It's, yeah, so it's like, this is actually in pounds. So yeah, pounds, that's more. Okay. So now let's break that pounds into CDs. Mm -hmm. So, so if, if you melt, how much is CDs now? Well, the pounds is about 15. Yeah, 15 there about. 12 point something. Yeah, 15, 16. So, okay, so, so let's be conservative. Let's, let's make it 12. No, 15. Okay, let's make it 15. <laughs> <laughs> I beg you. On the black market. No, 15. So that, that's, that's 600 million cities. 600 million cities. So now, now okay, let's bring the 600. No, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to build a point. And that's just for tuition. I'm coming. Uh -huh. This week, somebody called me that they needed to... I got a lot of... Funny, a lot of somebody, somebody needed to pay... 60% of their master's degree program in Ghana. Mm -hmm. Their master's degree was 11,000 CDs. Mm -hmm. And that if they did not pay, they would, they couldn't, if they didn't pay by Friday, they couldn't register or whatever. Mm -hmm. So that's 6,000 CDs for a master's program in something which is social science. Mm -hmm. Then I got a call from a man who said some guy had gotten eight ones and he had gotten to Takwa School of Mines mm -hmm. and they had given fee paying mm -hmm. and that his father had just lost his job and he couldn't pay. Right? And that was, Fee paying was around 10,000. Okay, so master's degree, 11,000. Fee paying. So let's say an average of 10,000 for fee paying. If you, if you divide that by the 600 million and you share it among Legon, Tech, Winneba, Cape Coast, Tamale, Takwa, even the public universities, Mpo, and you say you give the private universities half of that, that can actually prop up the industry. So it's, it, it's like, and if you look at the Kofi Asari data on investor investee spending, you can say, okay, this scholarship thing, if we scrap it, and then we have a scholarship for needy undergrads and master's degree programs, and then we spread it across all the investors, you will probably save, I don't know, the, the investors will save so much money. They should cancel you, uh, paying for universities abroad. That one they should cancel. Good. Uh, but I want to, and, I want to take and, you on on that. It has to be exceptional cases. Okay, so now Critical we have, have 2,000 posts standard, mm -hmm. some of which are level 300 and 400 and stuff. Can we give ourselves a cutoff point to say by a certain year? Oh, because yeah, these guys, course, these guys have yeah. to be paid. No, no, of course. Yes. Yes. I mean, not to waste about Good. that. Now, I want to come to Sky for a reason. I remember when you went to the UK, mm -hmm. you interviewed the scholarship guy. Yeah, that's right. I wanted to call him for me and ask him why he hasn't paid <laughs> <it. laughs> See, So that's what I'm saying. The trace is back to availability of funds. Back to sender. Yeah, that's right. And then also where funds are available, the yeah. numbers are overwhelming. In order to... to, to, to why get, are the numbers overwhelming? Because, for instance, if you are dealing with 2,000 students, you, you just... But who them gave them the scholarship? It's a secretary. So, so how can the numbers be schedule? Uh -huh, you see, so that's where the problem is. We do not have a proper way of auditing 
who gets to get a scholarship? So checking the scholarship. Yeah. You know that it is competitive. Yeah. You know that you have to go through the mill. There are interviews and all of that. That's one. <laughs> it is because your grandfather, you know, was a founding member of some political party, or your your father is a member of parliament. Are, are you the, saying the scholarship does not have a criteria for awarding scholarship? They have some a semblance of that. But they do, they do. But they but do. what actually happens behind the scenes? You see, the thing. reason it's important mm -hmm. is that we are talking about means testing and free SHS, and yeah. we are saying that there are some people who say they can pay, mm -hmm. and some people feel that in Ghana people will do free riding. Mm -hmm. So if we use the scholarship secretariat as a text test case, mm -hmm. that even though it's meant or cocoa boss scholarship, even though it's meant for poor people, mm -hmm. inevitably some other people get it. Mm -hmm. How sure are we that if we said we we're going to do even a Ghana? needs based scholarship yeah like we do for cope so like you are saying you've got an admission to taqua school of mines you have been given fee paying mm -hmm. why on earth would taqua school of mines give an orphan fee paying like i was thinking like i told the guy what was the sense in that you got eight ones mm -hmm. they've given you they give fee paying meanwhile they know you are poor or or, or can they know you are poor ah, you see so I the, the admission ah, but you are orphan can they tell you if, oh, uh, no, 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 we no. have over the years ah. mismanaged this scholarship it has, it Ghana scholarship thing look go to the scholarship secretariat mm -hmm. and find out whether they have a database of Ghanaians who have benefited from Ghanaian scholarship in no. the last 20 years and where they are and where they are whether they can produce but even in can yeah, they of are, course, yeah. that's what I'm saying. The management of the thing. Can. Of and I think, they first they of can. all, you see, I, I, for me, I wouldn't even want to go to the criteria and because it's not my area. It's education and they may have their technical things. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is that don't use our money to pay universities outside. It's criminal. Don't do it because it takes jobs away from us. Where, where, where do we stop it from? Yeah, I want to know, where, where, is it the get fund that gives them the money? Where do they get their money from? Where do they get their money? Is there, no, GMPC has a different scholarship. Their own. No, apart from that, GMPC also gives yeah, them. There's a way of, you know, so the scholarship secretary, they have re restructured it in a way as to pull resources from various state agencies mm -hmm. in order to, 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 to compose to exactly. uh -huh. Uh -huh. So in, in the process, what you have is so for instance they also have the commonwealth scholarship mm -hmm. they are somehow also involved in 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 that one too although mm. in in strict terms it is not a scholarship for the government of ghana it is the commonwealth scholarship do you understand what i'm saying just like you also have the children's scholarship and these other the, the fulbright scholarship and all of that all right. but there is an attempt to streamline the process but what is happening as Amens is saying is that the the requirements what do you find about the person as to give the person scholarship? Is there a needs assessment? It is not done in many cases. At all. It is just mm -hmm. a question of, oh, Charlie, uh, oh, I, I can give you scholarship. Oh. This and, 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 and better. Mm -hmm. It is Big men putting, kids, uh -huh. those who don't need the scholarship, they are the ones who are, we've seen it here in the last 20 years. They'll go, hey, politician Piki, go. Oh, hey, your father is this. Oh, what, what, what man of scholarship will be? Oh, hey, oh, oh, baby. They can come to you and ask you now, they don't pay scholarship, maybe. Then they gather them, go and put them. University of uh, 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 Aberdeen, University of East London. Dundee. Plenty. It's Anglia. It's Anglia. It's Anglia University. <laughs> you go there, all yeah, these Ghanaians doing first degree programs. Okay. And, and, and Central University is dying. All look, right. look at Ashesi. Ashesi has been strategic, of course. The leadership of Ashesi, Ashesi, well, Ashesi. 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 <laughs> they, they have a different model where they have, you know, they are, they deal with uh, uh, funding agencies outside of Ghana and things, you know. But if you watch Central University, Valley View University, uh, which are some academic of them, city. academic city, all these wonderful efforts by Ghanaians and you don't think that the scholarship money should be redirected to strengthen them yeah when central started go go and see the number of nigerians that came to central yeah it's a it's a big part of the and instead of making the thing stronger by helping with our own scholarship money you take the money and go and pay university of middlesbrough ah, that, that, it doesn't make sense now, we should stop it. What we I want to stop. what I want to know is how, where do we stop it from? Is it well, there parliament? Well, there, there has to be or a policy is it, is it, reform, mm -hmm. and that proposal must go to cabinet. Cabinet must decide what to do with it. Can there be a private members' bill that we can get private investors or investors in Ghana to support to say that 
from a certain year, all scholarships, secretariat sponsorships must be given for local universities, except in exceptional cases. Oh, yeah. I mean, so that, that you see, what, what I'm saying is that we need to move this thing beyond simply saying it. Because I'm sure the private investors are saying, look, this calculation you've done, 2,000 mm -hmm. students, 20,000 pounds, 40 million pounds, convert that to CDs. If you split that money and give us even one-tenth of that, mm -hmm. we know that we can sponsor people in this so that I'm sure we can rally private investors to come together to say, let's redirect mm -hmm. these funds. Because, Sky, a lot of private investors are suffering. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, in some of us, as I mentioned, in Nigeria, because of some of their FX rules, even the Nigerian students are not able to pay the money that they're supposed to pay for the investors to get that buffer. So a lot of investors are now re reverting to fee paying. So that qualified Ghanaian students who are very smart and who have to be subsidized cannot pay for the subsidy. So I feel this is a very germane point that maybe legally need to advise us on how to proceed. Because, and I'm sure I will find people, even in the education committee in parliament, mm -hmm. who will want to support such a move. Mm -hmm. Because it is so germane to the survival of our educational system. At a time where we are thinking about how to even do means testing for free SHS, this would be a good case. But I just wanted to come back to you to say, okay, uh, who do I want to mention the name of the guy running the scholarship secretary that I should pay these guys, these hundred or so people who have contacted me? Mm -hmm. They sent messages to Godfrey, they sent messages to you, mm -hmm. they sent messages to almost everybody in our production team saying that for eight months they've not has they've not had their stipends paid. Mm -hmm. Now, once you've put the person in the UK mm -hmm. and you, you've studied in the UK, Kokui, Charlie, it's a very tough place to be without money. Grim, grim okay. is the word. So I, I don't know what we can do to get them to send their money to them now. Yeah, so Kinsley Ajiman, I believe, is listening. Who? Kinsley Ajiman. Kinsley Ajiman. Yeah. You should just send the money. Uh, 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 Ajiman, just yeah. send the money. Kinsley Ajiman. Yes. That, okay. That's the question I'm asking. Is it that, is the money not ready before they send the students? I, I don't understand. Okay. Should it not be? When, when Salom Adonu was doing his master's <laughs> yeah. in the UK, <laughs> my, my God, <laughs> if you admit, come into university. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, he's hungry. <laughs> <laughs> because we're not sending the money. But why? Is I it, don't know. So they, they award the scholarship. Maybe they, and then, they, what, they send them. There's like, oh, I think, I think they send you've got them, the scholarship, I, but there's I think no they money. send yeah. them with a promise that every year we'll pay. <laughs> and I and think, every year, what happens? You know, you know, you know the schools, because they want people to come. Yes. If your scholarship criteria from Ghana says, you are, Bernard Avila is coming to study this, mm -hmm. and we'll pay his school fees. They'll, some sort of commitment. Because so it's like you've got guarantee uh, from government. Good. So after, so sometimes you have some forbearance to say maybe he won't pay, mm -hmm. whatever. But what happens is that the thing accumulates to a point that university says, look, if you don't pay, leave the school. Mm -hmm. And you're already in the middle of the course. You are not doing enough work to give you... You know, even if you are working on the side, that work can only pay for your your your, your room. Yeah, because it's work study. You only you're limited. Yeah. you can't work beyond a certain amount. And then, so what does that? The guy starts. They, they start swerving lectures. <laughs> you know, they start leaving like rangers. Some of them come and perch in some body room. ID, Charlie, your student ID is this, blocked. By Charlie, you, you can't use it. Well, but you find someone. What else in <laughs> my look? You can't. And in this, I don't know whether Ghanaian universities do it in mm -hmm. Ghana. Go for it. In in UK, even as early as two thousand and eight. Yeah. Your ID card is what gives you access to everything. Everything. Yeah. Everything. When including you, including buying is on shops. <laughs> when block, when block, yeah. And it. you know, I'm thinking about the common situation in Ghana. And, hmm. and I feel we need to bring this in. Where in Ghana, we have to go and bring police to say that we've changed your hall. <laughs> if Warwick University has changed your hall, mm -hmm. all they will do is that the card that you have will only give you access to Claycroft. <laughs> yes, and, and this is 2008. <laughs> Yet in Ghana, we have to send police people to go and say vandals. Don't go to your hall. Even that doesn't make sense. Yeah. Simply get an access Bernard. access to the to the hall. We, we can't we can't sit here and tell scholarship secretariat how scholarships are administered. We don't know that much, mm -hmm. but we know that if you take our money and go and pay mm -hmm. Cambridge University mm -hmm. for a course that is offered mm -hmm. by Ghanaian universities. Then you are doing a big disservice to this country. Somebody, See, somebody saying the, quality, quality tuition. Now the, the tuition we, is we, better. We, we can talk about that, okay? Mm. If it we and I won't contest that. Mm -hmm. If it's better, make a choice of looking for your own money to go. It's better. Don't use government money to do it. No, because we don't have. Mm. You see, we don't have. Ah, if we had, you think the students would be stranded? Mm -hmm. We don't have, and you know. We are very lucky because our public universities today are being managed by very capable people. Mm -hmm. And they are very wise. Mm -hmm. That's why over time, they are increasing the number of fee-paying students. Mm -hmm. Because it takes so they're... long to get their money from the government. Mm -hmm. You understand? And the fee-paying students, mm -hmm. if you increase by 100%, 
you get some 80%, 80% with the capability, another 20% may fall off. Mm -hmm. You understand? So this is how, if you go to University of Cape Coast Medical School, everybody is doing, paying fees. Everybody, the whole thing is fee paying? Yes. Mm -hmm. But is that fair? No, see, wait, so wait, 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 wait. You see, it's a, first of all, it's about their resources. Mm -hmm. Do they have the resources? They don't. And they think that, okay, if we also want to be com uh, able to compete, mm. you see, it's not just competing within Ghana. In most of the professional fields, yeah. it goes beyond Ghana. Yeah, so this is how we think we can also, you know, mm -hmm. go along mm -hmm. to get ourselves competitive. And that's it. But I'm just saying that, even with this, if we decided, medical school there, we pay for the young boy, we mm -hmm. pay 15,000 CDs or 16,000 CDs a uh, semester. Okay. Deadly. Now, if you gave him government scholarship, how much is 15,000 CDs? It's 1,000 pounds. Mm -hmm. It's not that much. Oh. Yeah. And Meanwhile, you are paying twenty thousand pounds for a master's that in some school in the US or UK. What will you pay? Yeah. So, 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 which means that, so, which means that, even the fifteen k uh, UCC is still subsidized. Oh yeah. Oh, heavily. Yes, heavily. But heavily. so I'm just saying that we should stop this thing. Just say we should stop this thing. So Girl. it's a wastage of state resources. In a sense, uh, well, you see, the, or the, priority. You see, the other argument that is made is mm. that you give these people exposure. Which, which people? The, the, the people we who travel abroad. abroad. We, we who travel abroad. But when I went abroad, didn't I come with exposure? But, uh, you, you know, you have to. My English you know, what I'm saying is that <laughs> that is if you have the resources, Sky. We don't have. I think that we see and this then, is and I, I, want, I want to link it to something. Mm -hmm. You know, because there's high demand for Ghanaian professionals abroad. Mm -hmm. So, for mm -hmm. example, doctors and nurses are highly respected in Commonwealth countries. Mm -hmm. I, I foresee foreign companies still giving scholarships. Oh, yeah. So, for example, Ghanaian trained nurses are still highly valued in the UK. Mm -hmm. yep. So you don't need to go to study something in the UK no. to be valued to go there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Number two, because these advanced countries see like Anglophone in uh, UK, US, Canada, because they see Ghana as a good place for people to come from, they will still offer scholarships anyway to their universities yeah. because they feel that the language is the same, the culture is not too different. They rather recruit a Ghanaian than recruit somebody from another place. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the market for foreign education will still be there mm -hmm without us using our money to, to pay for right, it. Let, let me tell you something. You see? You know, this professional's exodus thing is not going to end today. Mm. If anybody thought mm. that, uh, is thinking that, oh, we can do something and everything, nothing, nothing will stop. Mm -hmm. In the UK, UK, the NHS, the NHS as, as it stands now, mm -hmm. is in desperate need of about 400,000 nurses. Yeah, that's true. Hey. They're struggling. 400,000 nurses. Yes, that in the next two to three years, they need 400,000 nurses to survive. Currently, they employ 400,000 nurses, almost 400,000 nurses. Wow. It's probably they, the, the they, biggest public sector. Yes, they employ 140,000 doctors. <laughs> and they need another uh, around, I'm not too sure about that, around 100,000 doctors mm. to be able to have the equilibrium that they're looking at. Wow. And they have targeted Ghana and Nigeria. Giddy, 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 I'm giddy, telling giddy, giddy. you, if, um, um, if there, were, there was an airline that decided that it would take only mm -hmm. nurses and doctors it's in full. Nigeria it's every day, it's every it's day, I am telling you, I am telling you, so we need to rethink. So hold on, uh, let's, think that, let's think about that. Is it good or bad for us? It's good. Give me it's the give, give, so give me the three reasons why it is good. good. Why is it good for us? It, so it is good because it mm. is a market. You can you can educate people or train people when there's no market. Mm. It's a market. So, so for an educational side, it means our medical schools and nursing schools. It's a market. Can train more. Now we need to review the thing mm -hmm. so that we it should be restructured in a way that we will get financial benefit from these things in order to, to train more. reinvest and train more people. So let's take it one by one. So let's assume they are taking 1,000 doctors a year from Ghana. Yeah. Those 1,000 doctors were obviously trained with Ghanaian taxpayers' money. Yeah. So you should have a find a way in which at least some money can accrue back to the state yeah. from their going. And you know Aside what? from their private money, they send to one of those ways mm -hmm. is to have a conversation with the NHS. Mm -hmm. At okay. the national level. Okay. okay. And then review the requirements for going, for going mm -hmm. and say that, well, in order for you to get a qualified Ghanaian nurse, you need to hear from me. 
Good, because we will give you the certification. Exactly. Then we also then put in some caveat. But won't you also corrupt pay... it? Won't you corrupt yeah. it? No, no, no. I mean official. Ah, okay. In order for you to get so and so, I mean, the God, God. exit <laughs> thing, no, you have to pay this over a certain number of years. Indeed, the agencies that come here to recruit mm -hmm. the nurses, when you go there, they share your, your salary with you yes. for for, for the, a certain number of months. But do you need an agency to go? Well, it's easier to go with an agency. For it's for easier. Placement and, yeah. Yes. But won't, won't our system suffer? Because, uh, again, I'm, I'm, you're saying the advantage is possible they will get money back. But we are losing our best people. We are losing. And, they are... and I started by saying that we, it will, it's not going to stop anytime soon. We are losing. Mm -hmm. Okay. But the bigger question, can we stop it? No, I'm still on. No, I'm. Yeah. I'm, no, no, I'm, I'm the one asking I'm, I'm the question. Asking, I'm not asking you that question. <laughs> okay. I'm, 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 I'm asking that yeah. as a country, can we stop the exodus? We no. Can. So what? So what can we do with it? You are saying number one, we can find a way of financially benefiting as a country. That's one. Ooh. And then two, mm -hmm. we can re, we, we, we can re, um, what's the word? We can restructure the mm -hmm. training program. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is how I look at it. If the program is a four-year program, mm -hmm. I can make it a six-year program mm -hmm. with work experience, Com work component, experience component, mm -hmm. which work experience and traps uh... and traps the trainees at a minimum level. So even before okay. they leave school, they will still work for us. Yes. So if you have six years, the nurse would have had to do a year, a year in two, a practical three years facility in practical somewhere. Facility. So that system exactly means that every health facility, like even Tatale Sanguli, that is not having enough, mm -hmm. will still have somebody there as part of their requirement. Yes, that's one way of looking. Tale, you are at thinking it. very much. So, you, so, so, so I'm coming. So you could say, Minister of Health, say, you know what? You can you can come for our people, though. but their training requires them to do at least one year of practical experience. That one year is where they learn the ropes of healthcare delivery. Now that one year also fills our health system. Exactly. Of course, there are some experienced people who don't want to go, who will stay to supervise them. Yeah. So like the housemanship system, yes. you are having a system where no facility lacks a resource. Mm -hmm. Although yes. they still know that eventually they will go. There are countries that yeah. do this. Cuba does it. Mm. The Norwegian area, was it? The, 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 is it not the, the, no, the Scandinavian areas, they do the same thing. So we don't do anything like this. So 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 our system right now is basically you qualify, are a nurse, qualify, you get your qualification, you get your agents, pin, and you get your pin, and the agency gives you that chance. Once to you get your pin, oh you good. Oh. Let's come back to this. So you mentioned doctors and nurses. I'm also told that there's a drive for teachers. Yes, it's always been. Now the teacher one is is that also not an advantage because I think Ghana we have the more teachers than even doctors and nurses. You see, uh, oh. I just want to make a quick comment on on, on what you suggesting. You see, you see, as we speak, mm -hmm. there's a major battle between the UK, Pakistan, and India on the question of the ethical considerations mm -hmm. that ideally should be brought to bear mm -hmm. when doctors are leaving. Countries which are much poorer exactly. to richer countries. And, and I'm just looking at... This is on a national level. At the national level. Mm. So the story says NHS hiring more doctors from outside UK and EEA than inside for the first time. Mm -hmm. And the story opens by saying that the NHS is hiring more doctors from outside the UK, and this is from The Guardian, mm -hmm. uh, and European economic area than from within for the first time, setting off a moral argument over the health services growing mentality of poaching from the developing world. Mm. Now, unpublished uh, figures from the General Medical Council show that 7,377, which is 30 percent, 37 percent, of the 19,977 doctors who started work in the NHS in 2021 had British qualification. Mm -hmm. And it says a total of 10,009 new medics learned medicine outside the UK. So the, the figure is higher, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and EEA so-called international medical graduates compared to the 9,000 within. Many were from countries such as India, Egypt, that are grappling with shortages of medics. The tally of 10,009 uh, new IMGs hires mm -hmm. last year was almost triple the 3,431 who started in 2016. Mm -hmm. At that time, the IMGs made up 27% of new NHS recruits. So when it's IMG immigrants? Yeah, that, uh, no, no. These are, uh, what do you call it? They, there's, uh, this is, uh, what do you call it? An abbreviation of a term. The General Medical Council... Uh, hold on. Okay. So, so the argument of this person is that what? Mm -hmm. this, so, this writer so, is saying... Uh -huh. So, um, 
uh, what they call let me take you to that relevant there's uh, actually a book published on it Jay uh, Thomas, a retired NHS cancer surgeon who obtained the figures from the GMC, said the poaching of so many foreign doctors was unethical. Now, he said... From his point of view. Exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and he says that to be poaching from a country that desperately needed those essential services was unethical. And he goes on to say that... Oh, the hold, hold on there. Uh -huh. I, I, what are those countries that produce these professionals doing to keep them? You see, because he's making an ethical argument from where he's sitting. Mm -hmm. I've met doctors who have said to me that the, the, the only reason they've not gone yet mm -hmm. is because maybe they feel that there's hope. Because when they look at the conditions under which they work, mm -hmm. they don't think their country needs them. Mm -hmm. You get me? So mm -hmm. he's sitting there, you can say it's unethical to push the people. Yeah, it is. The person is also training in Pakistan or Ghana saying that the way the system doesn't value me, mm -hmm. I'm better off going and sending money to train my relatives mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. Do you get me? So I, I, I think the question we should ask ourselves as Ghanaians mm -hmm. is that do we really value our professionals, be they doctors, nurses, or teachers, or physiotherapists, mm -hmm. or whatever they are, accountants? Now, if we value them, what, what are we doing? to prolong their stay here or to benefit from them maximally. Mm -hmm. Or education. If we have enough educational institutions, now why are Ghanaian doctors in high demand? Because the medical schools are good. Mm -hmm. yeah. If the medical schools were not good, they would not be that high, highly valued. Mm -hmm. Now, the medical schools are good. Why can't we strengthen the medical schools to produce more? Mm -hmm. yep. The medical schools are not good because they don't produce a lot. They are good because the people there have maintained their standard. Now, if the medical schools are good, back to his point, if you have 600 million cities to spend on scholarship, don't you think it will make more sense to say, let's add 10% quota to all the doctors we train mm -hmm. so that we can keep more? Because if you train 100 mm -hmm. and 60 go, if you train 200, you still maintain your 40. Yeah, but you, you still not cure the deficit. While it may improve the deficit, the argument of this writer mm. is that you are a richer country. Mm -hmm. And of course, you can afford to pay more. Yes. So how much did we melt the dollar or the pound for? The pound is 15. Uh -huh. The dollar is so, not 12, so, 13. So, so, so you there. cannot, as a Ghanaian mm. government, compete in the labor market of doctors yeah. in order to retain them. It is impossible because they will always offer More, bigger, better, better conditions. Yeah, but pay. that's why he's giving you a solution. He's saying that mm -hmm. because you can't stop it mm -hmm. and because the doctors will want to leave, for, number one, some doctors may stay, mm -hmm. but stream the educational system to benefit maximally from them. That's, and he gave you an example of a nurse. He says, if a nurse is trained for four years and she goes, mm -hmm. make it five years. Let her spend one year in a district hospital as part of her training. Mm -hmm. They were all with nurse trainees. Now, I'm not saying we only need nurse trainees in Ghana. It's very simplistic. But he's giving you just one example. My point is that the people who manage our education and our health, mm -hmm. they are the ones who should have been making this moral argument, not a British retired doctor. Mm -hmm. The fact that our leaders are not even thinking about this, it's a problem for me. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Why is this article coming from a British man? Mm -hmm. Why? So it means that we, you know, we, they, we don't, don't we know that we are losing people? And why isn't it of concern to us that he, the guy there, is the one saying it? It's because Charlie, we, we have something here. We don't, you see, I'm saying that we don't value our people. Hmm. And because we don't value, look at how much you pay teachers. Look how we treat teachers. That's, that's, that's. Meanwhile, a teacher can go to Canada. Mm -hmm. And Sky, you'll be shocked at the resources available and how good our friends in UK who teach maths, who were average maths people in Ghana. Mm -hmm. But the system, in, I have a mate who did general arts mm -hmm. with me. He went to do chemistry in US and he's now like some high level. Wow. Uh, and I was like, how if you do so? The system, when you are learning. So you see, what I'm saying is that the system we put in place in Ghana, the way we train people, the way we, we, we don't, we, 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 kept, we, we people suffer too much. So they don't want to stay. And you, you, you are saying patriotism. Yesterday I interviewed yeah, Ben Abbas. I said, patriotism will not put bread on my table. I'm not saying don't be patriotic. You have to meet people halfway. Our authorities must see the strategic need of education and put in place policies that can benefit our people. And, and I agree with Samson on the scholarship issue that this amount you are spending to fund or subsidize a foreign institution, strengthen, look, Central University can, do med can train doctors. I'm they sure are they can. Architects. Do you get me? Mm -hmm. Look, they are training. Many years ago, it was only Legon that was doing medicine. Before tech came on board. Before UCC came on board and UDS. So now you have four. And then you have private universities. You have UHAS. Imagine if you had there's a, 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 a university of the quality of Legon in every region. Mm -hmm. Training doctors. Are you saying all of them will leave Ghana? Mm -hmm. Some will still stay. Yeah. So we don't know what we, uh, we have. We have. Look. Mm -hmm. 
medical students, mm. medical students, they complete medical school, finish house, jo house jobs, and they are not posted. Why? Because there's no money. And we are taking the money and paying some school somewhere. That's ah, look, the British people, eh? Mm -hmm. They 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 think light years ahead of us. They know that they can get your money. Mm -hmm. That's why if you are a British student, you pay less than an international student. Because the Indians are coming, the Nigerians are coming, the Chinese are coming, the Ghanaians are coming. You see, if you I, I don't know how three years ago was eight thousand eight thousand uh, pounds a year. Mm. Okay, mm -hmm. if you are you were an international student, you were paying twelve to fifteen thousand pounds a year. Mm -hmm. Okay, now for masters, the least mm -hmm. is eighteen thousand pounds a year. A lot of money. Mm. If you if you make a mistake of going <laughs> to LSE <laughs> or any of the or 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 imperial any of the, 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 the schools, guy, of London, then you are in trouble. Much, much more. You are paying. 24,000 to 36,000 pounds a year. Mm. Okay. What I'm saying is that mm. if we stop this one and redirect the money to us, mm. it will have a far reaching positive effect. I wanted to add something as a slight point. Could yeah. you remember when they introduced the teacher license or something? The teachers yes. were complaining. Yes. Now I'm told they are not complaining anymore because that, apparently that's their ticket. The license that I think Napo forced them to get, mm -hmm. which they protested against. Is now their ticket. That is it. You see, they've kept quiet. That is how. <laughs> yes, that's what they. No, 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 no. Is it? No, but this one, you have to like, apologize. Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> we spend a lot of air time yes. on teacher and says, "No, we're not right." Mm. Now they go and collect the thing quietly, mm -hmm. and they go to the UK. But, but, but it's sad because look, every young, and every young qualified nurse, mm -hmm. doctor is on his way out or her way out everyone you apparently meet. i'm told that yeah. the sectors are a lot so different people are telling me that mm -hmm. different professionals even our accountants i'm told that you know in fact i just received a text a message mm -hmm. from someone who is also talking about radiography mm -hmm. oh radiography they're hot cake yeah, yeah, yeah they're also going <laughs> yeah no but Dude, sorry, I, I, I actually feel we need to spend a bit more time crafting a strategy to 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 kill two birds with one stone mm -hmm. okay when somebody wants to leave, there's not much too much you can do. I feel there are some you can appeal to their altruism. You can put some things in them when they are in school to let them want to eventually work here for some time. Although the reality is that richer countries offer so much more money that, and you, and you also know that when you look at the the amount of money we get from remittances, the 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 diaspora economy is very key to the way Ghana operates. A lot of houses are being built by Ghanaians abroad. A lot, of, so there's nothing wrong with that. But have we thought about? A strategy as a nation to 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 use this as a tool to educate more people no we haven't because we we are not facing the realities mm. we can't have a strategy without admitting what the reality is if every other young nurse young doctor you meet is planning their exit then we need to sit down and review this thing it's not business as usual and you're saying our government cannot compete on the pay level. No, no. So they have to either... We can't even pretend. Mm -hmm. So either use a different incentive or agree that the guys will go, but find a way of, of using their belonging to prolong or yes. to get more people in the system. Yes. Uh -huh. To get my point, assistant. Okay, yes. so here's a message from someone who says, Good morning, how are mm. you doing? Right. I learned there are job vacancies in the UK, USA, and Canada. A few of my colleague teachers have relocated to UK. Mm. I also wish to try my luck. Oh. All I humbly need from you is a link to an employer to help fast track things for me, mm. being a caregiving job or any menial job. Maybe oh. you know someone who guides people with the relocation. Kindly assist me. I just need a contact of someone who can help me with the process. Mm. Ghana isn't favorable anymore. Kindly give it a deep thought for me. Mm. What I heard about those teachers who relocated is that conditions of service were sent from the UK, mm -hmm. which made things easier for them. They'll work there, and then they pay the agent 150,000 Ghana cities within the space of a year. Mm -hmm. I don't mind paying that too. Mm. <laughs> Let's get some comments on this. This is CG Breakfast Show. Time check. It's seven minutes past nine. Uh, it's a, a scholarship discussion that has changed into an education and then now a migration discussion, but it's in the same alley. Your views are welcome. 0549986996. Now, if you're a professional listening to me, I really would love to hear from you on the calculations you make. You know, I went to Kolebu a few weeks ago and I met a guy who said he's staying. He said something that really touched me. He said, you know, 
is you is it your show is one of the reasons why I still stay in Ghana? And I was really like, he said, no, no, he says, you guys mm. give us a bit of hope because he started mentioning his friends who had gone to Harvard yep. and the level of poaching mm -hmm. that they were getting. Mm -hmm. And you know, Kolebo is a very if you if you are training in Ghana and you work at Kolebo Confan, not you. And you, people you there from you know your work. Yeah. I so I say that we are underutilizing mm -hmm. even look, let me just take Kolebo and Confanochi. Mm-hmm. Why we are even underutilizing Kolebu and Konfanochi? Mm -hmm. Okay, Kolebu attracts the best doctors in Ghana. Mm -hmm. We used to call it the last stop. Mm -hmm. If you go round, 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 and round. If Kolebu can help you, you can be helped. Why can't Kolebu have satellite hospitals in in the regions? Okay, and then use that if you like. Not even the regions where they can't afford in say cantonments have a small Kolebu clinic there so that it can charge higher. Laboni, have a small Kolebu clinic there because the doctor, the consultant there can come and spend two, two hours a day there. Instead of charging 10 CDs there, he can charge 100 CDs there because it is Kolebu. That's extending the brand. Okay. You, you understand? Mm -hmm. Konfanochi can do the same. You see, because you see, we sit down, people travel to third class hospitals mm -hmm. in South Africa and in India. Oh, so they're not that good, eh? And pay so much money. Mm -hmm. Wow. Back in the day, they used to go to a, some hospital be in London. It, it was very popular. Every politician... Yes, I think it was the Cromwell. Cromwell Hospital. By the, by the, well, by, 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 well, the, by the road it's there. It's not that well. No, I'm not saying it's not that well, but it's not the best. Oh, really? It's, uh, uh, how can it be the best in the UK? I'm just saying that we, we can... You see, we can create these things here because we have the people. Me, when I was living in the UK, my worst nightmare was to go to the hospital. You didn't like the assistant. Because I'm a <laughs> shark. Uh, the like, average doctor in the UK, Wabon, compared to what they have better than us is they have systems, they have better equipment. Oh, really? If you go with the yeah. pain, they'll Those give physicians. you paracetamol. They'll give you paracetamol. Oh, now we pay back. So, 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 so even with all their, even with all their, they are not, so, technically, they are not better than us. So. They have exposure, they have equipment, they have systems. So, so that's people, why people they from Oh, I'm telling you. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you, I'll tell you something. I had a knee pain. Okay. I had a knee pain while I was using, living in the UK. Yeah, they gave right. me paracetamol and painkiller. Wait, 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 let me, let me wait. The pump paracetamol. Charlie, Charlie, at times when I wake up in the morning, I can't even stretch my knee. Paradeco. When I go, the man looks at me, he'll give me a half smile. <laughs> then he'll give you that you open. Para, the big one with the, <laughs> <laughs> the line in the middle. Yeah, the line in the middle. And so I relocated to La Côte d'Ivoire. Okay. And then this thing started again. Yeah. I went to the hostel. Yeah. A Malian doctor, female Thank doctor, you. Thank you. looks at me. He said, ah, why have you... It's just your uric acid level that's gone up. Oh, oh without even doing tests. Oh. He says this is uric acid situation. Could they so why don't you? So I'm just saying that it, it. the fact that it's UK that doesn't mean it's not possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. I'm a team. I'm a team. I'm a team. No, but guys, 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 you study in the UK. What he said is true. Sometimes, eh, you think they people get Charlie? No, we're not talking on that le GP level. Ah, the GP level. I mean, the specialist, the consultant. Oh no, no, yeah, of course. On the GP level, Bernard. But you know how many? Many of us end up seeing specialists and so generally. It's, it's the GP level see, where the, you The play. reason is that no, the, the requirement is that you first of all would have to see a GP before you even yes, go to get to the yes. next level. No, that's, 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 that's under that's, the NHS. But for private, you can go straight to the No, no, the GP. No, me, I wasn't seeing anybody. The GP. The GP, you are by every day. Aha, you see, hey. so it is the government system that is paying for. They give them para. Aha, so and because the system is so clogged, they para. almost the one with the middle room <laughs> and a bomb belt. <laughs> They almost always want to delay the process oh, because the, the system is clogged. Mm. So before you even see a specialist, it must be that the GP recommends that you actually need to see a specialist for the purpose. But this man who is giving uh, me so power for three months, that is like a specialist. Let me tell you. <laughs> that is a specialist. Yeah, let me tell you something. Uh -huh. Me, me myself, uh -huh. my mother, my biological mother, uh -huh. was a nurse in the UK for 22 years. Uh -huh. hey. Wow. wow. When she retired, mm -hmm. she was scheduled to see um, a specialist, was it? One, one of the, you know. Mm -hmm. It took her almost six months yeah. 
a nurse. Yes. Yes. To see a specialist within the UK system. Not just the UK system. In the same hospital where she had it's worked. Work. Mm -hmm. Oh, it took long. her like forever. Mm -hmm. I, I was it got to a point, I said, Mommy, just come to Ghana. She came to Ghana, went to Rafa Hospital in Tema. That thing was done. Look at that. Uh -huh, you see? So what my colleagues were doing those days is to feign emergency. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> because if you say your head is worrying you, <laughs> they, they just went just okay. <laughs> so, if you call 9, is it 911 these days or 991? Yeah, is it? The ambulance will come. Please, I'm and what? <laughs> I, can't, I can't breathe. It's very critical. <laughs> hey! No, Charlie, this is serious. <laughs> right, uh, so, what I was going to say was that if you're a professional, I want to try and get into your mind on mm -hmm. leaving. So, again, which areas? Doctors, obviously. Nurses, uh, physiotherapists, radiologists, lab technicians. Now I'm told teachers, yeah. accountants in high demand. But we why, are trying to list them. Yeah, but why? Is, why why is anybody asking for journalists? Services, health services, public health managers, uh -huh. chemical scientists, uh -huh. biological scientists, and biochemists, mm -hmm. physical scientists. Um, then you have the following categories those in the gas industry, mm. geophysicists, mm. geoscientists, Charlie. geologists, hey. geochemists, <laughs> Charlie, mm. <laughs> well, social and humanities scientists, mm -hmm. civil engineers, mechanical engineers, electrical engineers, electronic engineers, hey. design and development engineers, hey, production and process engineers, electrical professionals, yes, mm. IT. Business analyst, architect, mm. system designers, mm. programmers, and software developers. This is where the Indians have taken over. Mm. Giddy, giddy, giddy. Web designers, mm. information technology, communications, mm. veterinary doctors. Look at that. Wow. Dogs. Dogs and now they are looking for actuaries. Mm -hmm. Hey. So if you are doing mathematics mm. anywhere, you are hearing my voice. <laughs> Actually, you yeah, what? Enter that side. <laughs> yeah. And they are looking for laboratory technicians. Look, they are looking for. They are looking for. In so, fact, so we what, they, what are we looking Kukui, for? Now I'm coming uh, to your area. They uh, need you. Mm -hmm. They are looking for choreographers and dancers. Hey, no, 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 I'm coming. Oh, okay. I'm coming. Uh -huh. Yeah, voice, voice they say contemporary dance companies. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm looking for the opera. Mana? Yeah, um, skilled orchestral. Musicians. Hey. I can start an agency. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Producers and directors, graphic uh, did look, they are they are looking for everything. Yeah. Creatives. Look. <laughs> so if we are allowing medical <laughs> students to graduate and sit at home for two years without being posted, oh, God. they will go. Why are we doing that? It is not like we don't need them. It's not we don't have money to pay. The money we're we don't. In but the money is be, that's the point. We're telling that you can make that. money from that. Thing. The money. No, well, apart from that, the small money we have to know. We are using the money to pay university. You see, the investors you know they are businesses. So, of course. the investors in the UK they are businesses. They are proper commercial businesses. That's why they can look at you and tell you that as for you, you have to pay school fees. Mm -hmm. And you, dear, you cry no. You, your British citizenship is mm -hmm. some way, mm -hmm. so you pay school fees. Mm -hmm. If you are coming from Asia, pay 20,000. If you are here, pay 10,000. Mm -hmm. Okay? And in the investors, no, they even compete. They, they, in fact, they have marketing departments. Mm -hmm. The marketing, traveling to other countries to so, showcase what they have to offer mm -hmm. so they can get more students. They are not joking. So look at this. They travel to your country to come and showcase and market their schools so that they will take your money and educate you. And we are sitting here unprovoked. We are giving our money to them free. No, we should stop it. Mm. Mm. We should stop this thing and use the money to support our public universities and our private yeah. universities in particular. Yeah. I think that, that that point is just it's, mm -hmm. it's just so it's, it's heavy it's too look yeah. bad. Mm. I mean I can't Ulu, one day one day one day yeah, yeah, double, if yeah. if I get closer <laughs> to power yeah, yeah, the, yeah. one only one thing that I will influence you, is that we should re-establish our polytechnics and you cut the scholarship mm -hmm. secretariat so that the scholarship secretariat can you imagine if they went to Aquitia mm -hmm. and give one hundred young people scholarship to go and do technical courses in that so-called even technical universities oh do you know what it means. 
if you want to come and say the Swami Bantoma uh, uh, book, uh, uh, the macro area place there, the Swami enclave, the uh, magazine yeah. enclave, yeah. get all these young boys and give them 200 boys mm. scholarship to go and study electrical, uh, mechanical o o uh, OTD. Uh, what they used to call OTD in the technical uh, mm -hmm. uh, mechanical mm -hmm. engineering MET mm -hmm. mechanical engineering technician, technician courses, and then you create an enclave that they can now start upgrading mm. the knowledge base of magazine oh. from basic skill to school skilled educated. Charlie. You see, I'm English. saying that we have everything it takes. Charlie, form of a papa. Yes, a no, 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 you do form. Charlie, you do form. You do. No, you hold on, hold on, hold on, <laughs> hold on. I need to pay my salaries. Oh. 97.3 CDFM, getting lots of comments. Let's talk about last week, funeral homes for a bit. Yep, well, losing a loved one stops you in your tracks and leaves you shaken. And in those trying times, you can count on last week, funeral homes and crematorium. For the past 21 years, they've had your back when you needed it most. From picking up your loved one through to the burial or cremation and funeral receptions, mm -hmm. Lashabi Homes and Crematorium will guide you through the unfamiliar territory of selecting products and services you need to ensure your loved one has a fitting send-off. Mm -hmm. Contact us on 0509 542-409 or email info at lashbifuneralhomes.com Lashby Funeral Homes and Crematorium Dignity for the Deceased Comfort for the Bereaved And the Electricity Company of Ghana Limited has noticed with great concern the uncontrolled activity of bush burning especially during the Hamatan season This adversely impacts on the quality of power supply These uncontrolled setting of fire to clear bushes ends up burning our network system resulting in outages and inconveniences to our customers This also puts a heavy toll on our limited finances Please be informed that ECG reserves the right to seek legal redress against offenders who activities destroy our installations help ecg serve you better go to ecg.com.gh i have the appointment letter of a nurse and she says i can use it without mentioning her name okay the money, the money is good, huh? yeah well, look, what, salary skill is between us. 26 25,655 pounds to 31,534 pro rata if part-time base or 37.5 hours hmm. Uh, 2021 2022 rates. She's supposed to work 37.5 hours a week. Mm -hmm. And this 25, so she's any between 25,000 to 31,000 pounds a year. I believe so. Mm. That's a year. Yes, that's a starting salary. Mm. Mm. So prior to the acquisition of your nursing and midwifery council registration mm -hmm. pin, so this is before she gets a pin, the trust will pay you this starting salary Look of the 22,500 band four. If you, melt into if you get a pain, you are you are hitting mm -hmm. maybe maximum twenty eight thousand pounds a year. And her contract is a permanent contract. They've told her where she's located at, and then she just needs to bring her identity, evidence of professional registration, reference satisfactory to the to the trust, health assessment and disclosure, and barring service check satisfactory to the trust. Mm -hmm. Date third twentieth or thirtieth July. So it's a recent one. Mm -hmm. Bernard, let know. me let me explain this to you. Come you on. see, this is how much will a Ghanaian get in Ghana? No, it's, it's not a Ghana. No, I'm saying like not, compared to Ghana. No, it's not a Ghana versus UK thing because you see what she has told you mm -hmm. is what she's paid. She hasn't told you expenses. her expenses. That's true. And that she won't say. The rent alone. You see, but everything put together, she's but better, she's still off better off in the short term. Mm -hmm. In the short term, you see. Most of these people who have traveled come back 10, 15, mm -hmm. 20 years to find out that some of the amazed they left are in better positions. That's true. Mm. I'm telling you. So I'm just saying that it's not a, 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 a hook line and sinker. Seal, they are just going. Line and sinker. Mm. There are challenges that they don't talk about. So it looks attractive. Mm -hmm. And so there's a young nurse who used to visit us here who went, I think, uh, about six months ago. Mm -hmm. And I used to tell her that, look, it's okay. And hers is, look, my family circumstance, things are tough. So I need to find a way of earning something that I can, as an immediate which is mm -hmm. good. But now she gets there, and the first shocker is, the agency is taking a certain percentage of your salary for mm -hmm. a certain number of months, I forget. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now, you are in a shared apartment, <laughs> okay? Now, this shared apartment, you get, you have, um, common areas are also shared. The, all, the only thing that is not shared is where you sleep. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. <clears throat> now, you are paying 
between 800 and 1,000 pounds a month. Mm. Out of the 2,500 pounds that you are being paid. Mm. So you are left with 1,000 Depending on where the your your house is, transportation comes in. Transportation comes in. Very very good. And God be with you if you live in London. Mm-hmm. So this is better if you are two, so that you and your spouse can then go. <clears throat> if they can. So I'm just saying that it's them. not a full story. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now another thing is that. You're a black person. <laughs> Don't think that you're going to rise through the ranks anytime soon. Discrimination. In fact, 90% of the time, you don't see any rise. Mm. 90% the of the time. Ceiling. You'll be there. If you're a doctor and you are very sharp, and again, depending on which part of the UK you are, you may see some rise. If you're in London, some way. If you're in Wales, you're in Scotland, you're in some of these Midlands and the northern part, Yes. There's more space. You know, so it's not like it's everything not you see is what it is. I think we, we are moved by movies. What but, we but, see but people are, but, but mm-hmm. people are going. No, but that we've established. They are, they are going no, irrespective of what that, you are saying. No, no, I'm not saying so they shouldn't go. Uh, I'm saying that in the short term, you'll be better off. Not to waste In the long that. term. Long yeah. term, you have this questions. One. All right. Look at this one. We'll, we'll take a break and read some of your comments. It's 97.3 CDFM. So there's a message I got here from somebody you know. It says, Samens is right about the uh, English doctors. If you get malaria or any <laughs> fever in the UK, <laughs> and you are not lucky to <laughs> see a West African doctor, you will die. <laughs> <laughs> you will die. Oh, yeah. no, it, 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 first of all, first of all, they will run away from you. <laughs> as doctors as they are, some of them actually believe that ma- malaria can, can, can be, be passed on. Because some oh. of these things are no longer taught in some of the Western schools. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe that's what. Western, uh, tropical you know, tropical disease. Tropical. Is it malaria? Um, just a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Is it just a minute? <laughs> <laughs> this is the City Breakfast Show. The city's biggest conversation.
to Europe for a fee. That money was invested in the conglomerate that became Samsung, etc. Mm. Some of the older Koreans in the audience cried because they believed they sold their own people. In the old days, we couldn't leave the country until you had served a four-year bond working in rural areas before you could go out. I worked four years after qualifying before I went to the UK. We didn't live for money in my time. I left because of lack of equipment. It was soul destroying to have a patient die in your arms mm. because she was simply missing a piece of equipment. <laughs> All right, now, good morning. I'm a young nurse who mm. just completed training. I'm just in the house doing nothing. At the rate at which nurses are leaving, most of my colleagues have started learning or preparing to write the IELTS. I'm also considering the same action. I live with other senior nurses in the same neighborhood who are working. One just left last November. Another left to UK this month. Another is leaving probably somewhere this year. Even those working are leaving. How much more me? I'm not working. Finally, even those in training colleges currently are being advised to start preparing to leave the country. I think our leaders should be careful because what is coming is huge. <laughs> this is from someone from Insoam. Mm. Okay, but, uh, but I'm in the UK now. I'm a pharmacist. What Samens is saying is right. Our system of healthcare delivery is better, just that we don't have the level of equipment and tools to work with. In Ghana, you can get total healthcare service in a single day, unlike in months in the UK. Ah, okay. All right, Bernard, ask Sky. My son completed UHAS as a nurse, and he's done his rotation since 2019, oh. and he's still at home. Why? What prevents him from going to the UK to work? Ah. It seems there are more nurses than we need, or we don't have capacity to employ all of them. That's mm. Albert in Medina. Please, I think the nurses will no, need but them. The thing, the, a lot of the time, nurses are struggling to be yes, employed. So yes. I think the issue is the hospitals have the capacity to pay them. It's, it's the pay. The pay. But we actually need, and we need critical care nurses, you know, mm. specialized nurses as well. Mm -hmm. Bernard, I support your boss's stance on abolishing foreign scholarship. Mm -hmm. um, in the 1990s, dentists sent to the UK to train on full Government of Ghana scholarships were refused certification and employment in Ghana after completion. Mm -hmm. So about 90% of them either returned or continued to stay in the UK where they were fully certified, recognized, and employed to the detriment of Ghana. Hmm. This is Yao in London. Hmm. Yeah, some things, mm -hmm. some things based on that. Mm -hmm. um, and for those who know the space, mm -hmm. if you look at those who get scholarships to go to Norway mm -hmm. and Sweden and mm -hmm. Denmark, they tend to return more than those who go to the States mm -hmm. and, and, Canada. and Canada and the UK. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you've not, is, yeah, is yeah, it yeah. a function of no, it's how an immigration policy thing? Probably, yeah. The system yeah. works. Yeah, it's an Im immigration policy thing. And um, it takes a lot more to reside there than mm. just an academic thing. And mind you, in Norway, education is free, free for everybody, whether you are a citizen uh, or you are not. So, there were, so US, UK, and Canada probably have a policy that will absorb you. Mm. But the Scandinavians yes. will be very, they are very Bye -bye. careful. Yes. Go out. Yes. Yeah, they, like and they, 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 your color, they will cut you. Yeah. They like their people. They will cut you. Okay. And, and, and again, okay. in rethinking our, our offerings, mm -hmm. I think, again, <clears throat> we, should, we should get back to, to, to investing in pharmacognoxy <laughs> more than... No, seriously. Call me that. Se no, I mean, herbal medicine. I'm, I'm talking about herbal medicine. Mm. Pharmacognoxy. That's right. I mean, For if we structure this properly, invest in it, and... and Produce doctors mm. who are, who are, who use the who, who understand the two. The two, of course, of yeah. course. You think University of uh, what? Uh, well, East London Hospital will come and take somebody. Ah, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I get. We should expand I our scope point. so that they are like the Chinese so can people. Solve you know our the problem. Chinese people, all their doctors. That is, they know Charlie. Not Charlie. <laughs> Let me Go to the hospital. There's a Chinese hospital in Osu. Charlie? I forget the name. The yeah. kind of yeah, the, yeah, yeah. And Beijing, Beijing, Beijing Hospital. Charlie, oh, what they, they are here in Ghana. I'm making Tufan Tune. It's Tufan. Yes. How is Tufan? Yeah. Medicine. <laughs> you never see paracetamol there. But it works too. Of course. <laughs> so we should, so we should we develop our own. We should develop it. Mm. Let Papa, like we are in trouble. So like this, uh, like this, a croppon. What's it called? Papa. Mampon, Mampon. The, the, of, uh, the, the whole pharmaceutical, uh, global uh, pharmaceutical uh, industry is a scam. The whole global pharmaceutical yeah, industry. Yeah, it's time. a big scam. Oh, and they I'm, create... Oh, so your point is that... Look at this COVID vaccination thing. Haven't you seen the Pfizer boss that people are chasing him that that thing is not working? What I'm saying <laughs> is that they create <laughs> the <laughs> condition for you in your country, and then they create the brand, and then make sure that you buy it from them. So, so I'm coming back to you. So your point is that for things like malaria, 
we need to start thinking about training our own people using our own herbal we medicine have to expand it because it's, it's, it's that is what will give us the health but it's, it's the investment in that we don't invest last I'm week saying that yeah. we should invest mm -hmm. in i'm coming last week and mm -hmm. it, it leads back to the universities and creating opportunities you no know, last week the um u.s schools have to report mm -hmm. on how much funding you're getting mm -hmm. and all that in terms mm -hmm. of research mm -hmm. tell us there's a school that got 800 million dollars one school one school 800 million dollars they yeah. raised that yeah in it's going towards r d hey just one school mm -hmm. yeah also and 800 million dollars just for research and development yeah and you look at some of our schools here so that's behind a budget of almost all our investors put together <laughs> Yeah, you know, and you ask yourself, what are they getting? Because if you listen to the discussion we've been having, if the schools get these kinds of monies, they employ more. They are doing a lot more advanced research. So, for instance, somebody, uh, Wendy Simmons spoke about teaching welding at a polytechnic in Canada as compared to somebody who said, well, we have welders here. Yes, you might have a welder, but the equipment that is used in industrial uh -huh. welding is not available here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the advanced work that would have been done, we can't afford most of those things. There are, there are two things I'm interested in what you, the, the two of you have said. The issue of training people that we need and in areas that we need as against the path set for us. So the issue you mentioned about like herbal medicine mm. and then welding. It seems to me as if even though we are spending money training people, we are still training people for the market of other people. And, and, yeah, and we're not spending yeah. as much Instead of training people to solve our problem. Because right. if you look at the herbal medicine thing he's mm. talking about, like... I've always asked myself why it took so long to develop a malaria vaccine. The, but, but see, it comes because malaria point. was not a priority for them. Exactly. But if you are giving, waiting for them, yes, to just I'm saying that if you are giving, if you are developing your vaccine making capacity and you are told uh, your people within Kolebu, mm -hmm. Kumasi, and then Mampong that I'm giving you five years to develop a malaria vaccine. But that is they would have had it. Yes, but that comes with, that, but that comes with policy and state funding. But that's what he's saying. Yes, I know. But I'm I'm saying that. It's where we've struggled the most with because mm. the state has not seen itself in that place. No, we are not thinking. We'll get there. We are not thinking. I don't know you research. COVID. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, we made a promise to Noguchi and the likes. That yes, we, are, we haven't fulfilled it. That we are going to give every year. Yes. They are going to get X amount. We are doubling their research, whatever. Tripling, whatever. We haven't given I'm sure the first one, crap. Or some about and it. We didn't go. Let's go back to this. Okay. So I'll develop this point, the, the, the point about the... Um, Pharma, whatever you mentioned it, you know, mm -hmm. that pharmacognosis, make a note of it. I'm very interested in that point. And okay. then the welding points, but let's go back to the messages. So AAB in North Ligon says, mm. I met a doctor in a consulting room last week. Mm -hmm. He was keen on leaving this country soon. You could see the frustration in his eyes. Mm. When did we get here? We simply don't value these medical professionals. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good morning, Bernard. Wonderful discussion. Mm. Thankfully, I had a scholarship from UNICAF to study uh, an MSc in engineering construction management at the University of East London, mm. a course you will not find in Ghana. Okay. However, okay. The course is done online, and I don't have to be stranded in another country. Mm. Can't that be done for people who want to have a different learning experience? Good so point. instead of physically relocating to study, mm -hmm. they could do it online. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, but I'd rather than paying for f or, or for paying fees, why mm -hmm. not learn online? Or do it's okay. Someone else is saying the same yeah. thing. Or you could do short courses on YouTube. Use that knowledge and the money available to pay really? fees or, right. or or to start a business. Mm -hmm. Of course, mistakes will be made, but who doesn't yeah. make mistakes? You're only foolish yeah. if you don't learn from them. People are no longer looking for certificates, but for wisdom and talent. Good point. There's, the way learning has changed. Yeah, it's very possible. To, I mean, we are talking about. Uh, what this the AI thing? What's mm. it called? Yeah, it's it's yeah, it even seems to me as if the the scholarship is like so passe because you I can tested it yesterday. You can even it. get like mm. Sky mm. for things like Coursera and now, yeah, like yeah, yeah. there's so there's much. so much more you can. You don't actually so have to much. travel. No. I was talking to somebody and said you don't even need to travel to another country for a conference because no. now if you, you can you, you don't have to go anywhere. No. So it's a different conversation. But let's okay. just wrap up here. Okay. Uh, even before you go on, mm. you see there are young people in school as we speak now. Mm. who are having difficulties mm. managing um, because of large classes. And you see, you are you have an advantage over some of us when we're in the university university. Mm -hmm. If look, MIT mm -hmm. has a whole a whole first degree curriculum free on YouTube. You are serious? I'm telling you. Mm. A mm. whole first degree curriculum yeah. free on YouTube. Oh. Check How MIT open courseware. The curriculum is there. Oh. MIT and, and and I'm talking about teaching, not just not just text. They are lecturing you. Lecture YouTube teaching, MIT open courseware and check, 
from engineering to marketing to business so administration. The Stanford also has that. They all have. For data science. They ho- I'm, I'm, so I'm saying, MIT has if you're MIT MIT open course where you can learn, if you are serious, you can take mm. a whole degree. I mean, I don't know how you can convert that for a certificate, but I'm just saying that if you're already in school, you have resources. You, you are not so disadvantaged like we were because we had to wait for the lecturer to come and give notes. And the loss, no, he, he prepared it like 30 years before he saw us. <laughs> you know? <laughs> MIT open courseware. Check YouTube. But I'm saying that. So there yeah. are several of them. I can, I'll, I'll make time and, 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 and list these things so that people can see that, look, the world has left Change. us behind Ooh. and we are still sitting here. Oh, Go, Accra teacher training. Go and see the place. It, 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 uh, Atraku. Atraku. Go and see the place. Uh, the, the resource place for our teachers. You know, we have not expanded the place in the last 30 years. But why? We always pretend we are doing something. Before you see somebody go and chop the money. <laughs> let me go to let a croquet training college. Near Obwase. You know, so I'm just saying that we, we see the problem, but we don't solve the problem. Mm-hmm. We pretend we are solving the problem. We cannibalize the opportunities with other problems. Mm. Let me read more comments. Good morning. Uh, diagnostic radiographers are highly needed in Ghana, and, they are, and the few are leaving this country because mm. there are better opportunities in the UK and Canada. These foreign countries are sponsoring Ghanaian radiographers and some medical doctors to do specialization. Mm. Kindly check the background of the students stranded in the UK. These beneficiaries are studying administrative courses which are done in Ghanaian universities. KNASU has been sponsoring brilliant but needed students to study in their university and they produce a lot of professionals in this country. Some three town students have benefited from it. I think the resources from scholarship secretariat should be channeled to our universities. So this is Xavier who is supporting Samens. But uh, Bernard, this building is a, built by a friend who is a radiographer in the UK. I'm the supervisor <laughs> for him. I charge for the supervision work and I can tell you on authority that this guy wasn't having 2,000 CDs as his monthly savings when he was in Ghana. Mm. The salary was used for from ATM to pocket to mouth. Today, he has this building. Our senior colleagues who worked for 30 years don't have this. The government mm. affordable housing scheme is shared among politicians. So he's saying that some people who work abroad are able to still make savings. You remember I interviewed a guy, a nurse, who said he and his uh, wife mm. were in the UK, and that he saves at least 5,000 CDs every month because they, they live together. Mm and they, they have joint accommodation, so that in the next five years, they will finish their house in Ghana. And he didn't say I was going to do that. So I think you are right. In the short term, it's a good plan. So maybe when you go, what's your long-term exit strategy? Yeah. Can you take some courses on the side and come back? Would the system accept you? We don't know. Yes. Okay, let's read more comments. Okay, Echo, who is in the UK, says, mm. isn't it also possible to bring an expert from another country to teach students in Ghana, like the welders? I guess that would be cheaper and mm. you'd educate more people. Mm. So instead of students going there, bring one person to yeah. teach. A lot of yeah. people. When they decided that Presec, Presbyterian Boy Secondary School was going to be a science college, they brought teachers from India. From India. Mm-hmm. What was the first of name of the first guys? If you have some Gak. Names. Gak. And Accra Polytechnic, Kanduri. Yeah. Gak. Mm-hmm. No, you see, no, I'm it's, saying it's, that it's Kanduri. It can be. It's Kanduri. Kanduri. I mean, I haven't seen a physics but teacher. But there's a book to call Gok. There's Gak and Gok. No, Gok is. Gok is. Is. Usu. Yeah, Ghanaian guy. Ghanaian guy. Gok. Godfrey Ousu. Gok series. He was, he was one of the best physics teachers in yeah, Ghana. Yeah. But he himself studied geophysics in Legon. Okay. But the Gak but is the Indian part. guy. Gak is the Indian guy who used to be at Preset. Gak. So I'm just saying that this, yeah. the guy the, the just points you are making is yes. right. So yeah. bring one professional instead of sending 30 people. Away. Yeah. But yeah. Some of them won't come. Some of them, <laughs> Sky, you know, you know, you see them because they are not paying for that thing. Mm-hmm. Every day they are enjoying life. <laughs> <laughs> and then they'll be there and then someone will shout Sikanabo it means that weekend they will blow <laughs> messless they'll, they'll put Doneo you're gonna party hard <laughs> you're gonna party hard <laughs> All right, so Kelly from Medina, the issue with the scholarship thing is greed by politicians. I can tell you for a fact that politicians have hijacked the scholarship for only their families. Between 2017 and now, I can name a couple of people from just one family who have benefited from this scholarship unduly, but because they are related to a big man above. For one family. Uh, Bernard, I'm here doing my PhD without scholarship, and it's not easy. Mm. I'm paying £13,000 a semester. I have a Ghanaian here who was given a scholarship for his master's in 2019, the same time I was also doing a master's program. He went back to Ghana, and he came back for another master's program again on a government scholarship, just because he has someone in government. Should I be given at least 50% scholarship, I won't be thinking of quitting my PhD next month. Oh, This is Kwame Fiak in London. 
The sad side of this scholarship is that most of the students don't return after completing their program. Hmm. Bernard, please tell Samens to relax before he gets oh, out. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> Charlie, yeah. the numbers are overwhelming because of one reason. Too many people are on government scholarships paid money to get on the scheme. Mm. There are girl boys in the scholarship system in Ghana too. Hey, Sometimes they are people at the secretariat. <laughs> if your tuition is about $10,000 a year, they charge you $4,000 to $5,000 back door to put you on. Wow. I have plenty of friends who have gone through that. And funny enough, a lot of Ghanaians find money to pay that just to make it easier to get their visas. They're taken through an orientation process at the secretariat. Half of the people seated at that orientation paid money. Oh God. And government is overwhelmed by the amount of fees they have to pay. So That's it. Yao. Okay. Samens has been charitable. Even the local scholarships are based on political affiliation or your relatives should be connected. This thing is advertised on party platforms. This is hey. Ike in Cochrane to me. I think I critical. I hear you dis <laughs> I hear a discussion on the challenges with government scholarship awards to connected people and not the needy. Can you juxtapose this concern to the, yeah. with the argument that the free SHS should be That's what I was to trying to say that it's a good discussion to have one day as well because in Ghana I mean to, go, to be fair for me, at least for myself, if you said secondary school, there's scholarship for poor people, and I know that my children, I can pay for them, I will not go for the scholarship. Of course not. Do you get me? So I, I think university is a bit more expensive, which is why rich people will take advantage. Secondary school fee is not that much. Yeah, but you'll mm -hmm. be surprised that there are people who have. No, oh, no. They'll still secondary take school. advantage. Yeah, secondary school is oh, not that much. No, that is true. Oh. Bernard, mm -hmm. me, when mm -hmm. I was going to secondary school, mm -hmm. I knew that I couldn't pay for the secondary school fees. Hey. I knew that because my father wasn't paying my school fees. My that. mother was just an ordinary nurse at the time. So I decided that if I chose Achimota School or I chose Presec, it would be too competitive for the number of scholarships available. So let me choose Swedu Secondary School. No and I chose Swedu Secondary and School and I got the scholarship. Because been, so the grade I had, no, not too many people had. So the number of scholarships allotted, I got it easily. When I was in uh, Form 3, my grandfather, who now got to know that I was in secondary school, had a, was a cocoa farmer, said, oh, then my my, my grand, the woman cocoa scholarship. Then I got a CMB scholarship. But for that, it would have been difficult for me to enter a secondary school. So I admit that there are people who genuinely need... Yeah. No, but, but the question is that, will there be a lot of people who can pay who want to infiltrate? For even second, second, second school. That's why you have to put in systems. No, uh, some, some people can pay. You see, the structure of families can be funny. Some people can pay, mm -hmm. okay? But some people also have dependence beyond their... their uh, so they'll put all of them inside. Exactly. The so, but open-ended... Everybody free will give us problems that we cannot manage. So you think the means testing and trying to do scholarship will still be better than the way we are paying for everybody? It will be, it will, it will be, it will be more effective. Mm -hmm. It will be more useful than because, look, listen, this free for all thing will not work because we don't have the means. That's it's as simple as that. Right. Mm. And oh, PR and propaganda will not solve the problem. Because when, the, when there's no food, there's no food. Bernard, the saddest part of this is that our best are leaving. The older, highly skilled nurses are all leaving. A lot of my mates have left and they are doing exploits. More are planning to leave. The ripple effect will take a toll soon and it will not be good for the country. This is coming from Senna. It's always beautiful to see some men's approach about public sector issues with private sector mentality. But you must appreciate the bureaucracies which have tied up the country's development or stagnated it. Um, I think we should strongly attack the bottlenecks and the bureaucracies in, is the issue. Okay, this is from somebody you know. Let's read okay. more comments. Guys, this is simple. Do a request for information to all the state scholarship awarding institutions in Ghana. Mm. Use the data to drive the public agenda on how paying forex scholarship is madness and how that can transform our Ghana educational system. It's the politicians who eventually share this amongst themselves. Okay. Bernard, my little brother applied for a scholarship from Ghana Scholarship Secretariat to study in Canada. In the final interview, he was told he is too smart to be on scholarship. What does um, that mean? We were shocked. I thought scholarships were for brilliant and smart but needy students. He was denied, sadly, but we move. What Good morning mean? to you and your team. This is William from Ashraman Estates. What is who who said that? Was it, was it the official <laughs> position of the team or somebody, somebody passed a random <laughs> comment? 
Wow. <laughs> Which is likely to be. Bennett, I attended an education fair yesterday. Even with the scholarship the school is giving, cra, the rest of the money to be paid is still huge. Schooling outside, you need a lot of money. Mm. This is Chidi Daniel, a teacher at Presec Ligon. Mm. <laughs> Chale, um, I'm a teacher at an international school. I'm preparing to leave this year giddy giddy. Oh, I think I've plateaued in my career, oh. so I want a new challenge. Year 2023 is Project Work Abroad. Mm. When your citizens are actively seeking to leave the country and foreigners are keen to come here to make money, something is wrong with your system. That good morning. Is, that is just That's true. Truth, man. That is truth, okay, man. Joe from Tema says, good morning, Bernard and team. Please, because of the high conditions in Ghana, some of our engineers in Tor are leaving for Iraq refinery work. <laughs> Can you Iraq. imagine? As well, Iraq, me about those one. Yeah. Yeah. Iraq. Please, that's, that's the news, yeah. news Iraq. Iraq. The, Iraq, Iraq. Most of our colleagues are are gone and more are waiting for their visa to also join all right all right guys all right uh, let me let me turn my attention to something else uh effective event series ends on monday we have a final edition with michael ohini Fah. he'll be talking about avoiding self-sabotaging behaviors but when i come back Godfrey has opened uh, six currency notes in front of him i wonder why he's oh. put are you doing it gali no, no, no. <laughs> I need you to explain what you do in the morning. So we'll be back. I see five CD, ten CD, twenty CD, two CD, a hundred CD in front two of him. Two has come for the two hundred. Yes, and he's put oh. everything in front of him. So I, I, you are sharing the telling No, we, we explain them. I want you to explain the money thing when we come back. Stay with us. This is the City Breakfast Show. The city's biggest conversation. So this morning, um, I got a gift uh -huh. from um, one of my protégés. Oh, yeah, yeah. Fifi Protégé. Yes. Oh, of course. I'm happy to call Fifi a protégé. No he admits problem. that I'm a... No problem. I'm it's a okay. Don't, don't, fight, guy. don't fight but me. Fifi, okay. Fifi wrote, uh, he co-authored C.K. Genfi's autobiography. Mm -hmm. And it's, it came to my attention, you know, it just occurred to me that it's so deep, mm. you know, and you've been talking about reading, you read the Obedansa, but that's someone, someone. Obeda someone one, and yeah, how man. it informs a lot of the things that too, you do. Too much. Um, if you visit, if I, if you, somebody visits your office and they check your bookshelf. Yeah, man. They see a lot of yeah. these things. Yeah. Right. And in reading the forward, it was written by Cameron Dodo. Cameron Dodo wrote that. If you're a journalist or you read, I don't know Cameron Dodo. There's a problem. Mm -hmm. And he says 
well, there's a paragraph here, then I'll make my point. It mm. says that Siki dominated the world of football in Ghana for over half a century, mm -hmm. achieving so many firsts mm -hmm. in his career mm -hmm. that it is difficult to determine which were the most significant. Mm -hmm. He was the first African footballer to mm -hmm. play in a professional football club. Wow. Mm -hmm. Dusseldorf in Germany. In his brief career there, he dispelled many of the racist stereotypes associated with African sportsmen, such as the lack of discipline, unwillingness to train hard, and wasting earnings on women, drinking and fast living. Mm -hmm. He goes on to talk about a lot of other things. You know, First Ghanaian to yeah. win. And I, it takes me back to something I notice quite frequently. Mm -hmm. Seek was a sportsman. Mm -hmm. right? But a lot of the things that we do in this country, we pay attention to, give credit to Only our, po all political Only people. politicians. Mm -hmm. politicians. Mm -hmm. So like, today I was just, they said, it, I, I took our currency mm -hmm. notes for big instance. Six. Mm -hmm. you know. So 20 Ghana cities, the big six. Mm -hmm. Independence Arch. Yeah. And then silence. Is this the court or in some this parliament? Mm. Yeah. This parliament. 20 Ghana. You give it 20 Ghana. Let me hold it. Mm -hmm. talk about. 10 CDs. Mm -hmm. That's the Supreme Court. Yeah. Supreme so, yeah. Court. 10 CDs. 10 CDs. Big Six. Independence mm. Arch. Bank of Ghana. Bank of Ghana. Mm. Five CDs. Big Six. Independence Arch. They print Arch. the money so they'll put their picture yeah. on it. But bro, why are you putting the money in there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I have a different focus for the money. So this University of Ghana. Yes. On five Ghana CDs. <laughs> Two CDs is. Two cities has the old parliament house yes. in front, Kwame and Kwame, Kwame the politician. Mm -hmm. and then 100 cities is a bit wow, more recent. Big, big six. Mm -hmm. um, I think this is the maze of parliament, if I'm not mistaken. Sky knows that. Yes. And then, of course, it's the maze of parliament and then the parliamentary but chamber. But where is the 200 Ghana? The 200 Ghana has been taken. Someone's give us 200. Give us 200. Let me see whether I can find something for you. Two cities has come. Ah, yes. Brand new. Yeah. It's very brand new. Yes. Very brand new. Yes. Yeah. Has to be a house. Jubilee oh. house. So what's, what's the point you are making? No, my point. No, wait, I don't know. How are you collecting the money like that? I'm on my petrol. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm, I'm just a bit I'm concerned, concerned about how mm -hmm. we don't have a lot more of our non-political heroes at the forefront oh. of, Particularly sports. of symbol. Not even just sports. All the time. No, <laughs> no, you're right. So, you don't no, have no, time no, for this one. We, 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 it's almost we like have immortalized only, only politicians are everywhere. Okay. This matter. CK Gen Fee. CK Gen Fee. If not for the fact that Fifi Anaman has written his oh. autobiography. Oh. In 10 years, nobody knows who CK Gen Fee is. Oh. This is somebody who will be his, remembered in a lot of countries over generations. He won, he won Afcon like twice. He's won three Afcons. Yes. As a player and as a coach. Coach, yes. The first three Afcons that we won. CK and, Fee. and all that. He discovered a lot of our players. We we talk about Ephraim Mamu. Oh, yeah. He, he, nationally. He was on our old Ghana, he's on our old 20 cities. Where is it? They've he's gone. Thrown it no, I'm just saying nationally. Where is where? General you assassin. understand? Mm -hmm. The politicians have named the streets after themselves. Mm -hmm. So, I've, right. seen, I've seen the, the, way, the way now the politicians are dating themselves. <laughs> I'm not sure anybody will put politicians on our city. All right, the city will get dating. <laughs> <laughs> no, but they are. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so for me, it, it was my big concern, you know, that perhaps we need to pay more attention to one way of immortalizing the, the history of them. this country yeah. is not a history of just politics. You are so right. It's a history of, art, of artistic geniuses, teachers, mm -hmm. of teachers, musicians, composers. Of, you know, Sportsmen and women of entrepreneurs. Ah, my God! People have done so many things. Journalists, for this journalists. Oh, wake up one day and see a bit the picture on our money. On our money. So I, I think, Azuma has done so much more. Azuma, 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 Azuma and Abedi have done more for Ghana than the many politicians. Azuma Nelson. You see, they have marketed Ghana more. More than yes, yes, yes. You know, so Azuma and Abedi alone. What is that? Oh my God! On the coin. He should be on the coin, but he's a small boy. No, can I? Where can I get this book? I want to read it. Well, I, I feel you brought four copies. You, one, so you one, can get one. one of, but you brought no, one. Is, is it one of the ways you can, one of, one of the ways you can immortalize people <laughs> is to give their material to people who have platforms. <laughs> I don't have a platform. If you write the book, if you write the book, I don't have a platform. If you, know, if you write the book and you want people but to control, because platform. you see me. This is the thing. This is the thing. So people ask me how I get my topics. I'll probably read this book and forget about it. Mm -hmm. I'll be talking to some men and he will say something, and I'll remember mm -hmm. something in the book, and that's the whole topic. So that knowledge, when you acquire it, it's sort of sit somewhere waiting to be provoked yeah, to come out. So but please, you know what to do. But I'm just saying, perhaps at another, another time, mm -hmm. we we need. You know, we, we need to remember these people. Yeah, this country so. is not just a country of politicians. And that is why we are we are not doing too well. But which is why on this we program... We are not doing too well. You, but let me tell you something. All the practical things we've done was that when we came on radio, 
Radio was just the 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 the, the Poli- playground for politicians. Yeah. yeah. We call them when we need them, but we don't have, we don't we don't want to tell people that for every discussion you need this politician. So it's very subtle. So yeah. even with media, you don't have to dominate it with politicians. So for me, I take your point hundred percent, mm. and well, I think that we probably well. can even create a list. Yeah, now that I read that says you can get it on Booknook. No, I don't want to pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, no, that's for the list. Now. That's for the list. Charlie, because Charlie, at least for that's at all. But you get to add one. At this height, you need to pay for things like that. Oh, so it's so it's so so there are yeah. four. Why? Let me make this point for you. Why is so important yeah. to be promoting? these things is mm. that it helps us avoid some of the mistakes of the past are, of, of the past yes and even some of them look i, I was listening to you on uh, what the papers are saying mm-hmm. in, and, in all your glory and you see because kai has spent time in parliament in not just as an observer as in a, parliament as a big man working, as a big man there yeah yes you you have a lot of angles too much to a lot of the issues too much and it just took my mind to a book i read by Honorable Kendrasa mm. on the workings of parliament about his life mm. and the time he spent. So I was like, this book by Kendrasa, every young parliamentarian should, should read, read it. it. And yeah, I agree. Come on. <laughs> no, no, not just the journalists. They empty themselves. They empty they themselves. They must read it. I am telling you. It must be compulsory reading. It must be a compulsory, a must read for every. You know, mm. I'll get the book, the picture, and then post it. No, we'll put it in the next book. Honorable Kenjasa's book yeah, recounts right. the transition from the PNDC. Ah, so the 93 parliament. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. But for that book, I never knew that Kwesi Boche had a hard time passing his budget under the NDC only parliament. Charlie, we have to read, though. So you see, so a lot of things have happened in the past. Yeah. A lot of that we, we can learn from and these books are very important I mean, but thank you for the 20 Ghana the 200 Ghana have a nice <laughs> weekend you have to pay this back yeah, I won't it if you die you go see me you go follow my jam go for countryside if you die you go see me you go follow my jam go so over to over to AJ and Frema to take over the radio to the next level but Kalekuda is here we sit in news at 10. Good morning, Caleb. Good morning, Bernard. In the news, executives of the National Democratic Congress, NDC.